championship team right there. It's a hot time. A great night for football here in Norcross and the Region 6 2A opener for two great football teams in the persons of the Westminster Wildcats and the Greater Atlanta Christian Spartans. We welcome you to GPB's primetime exclusive coverage of Football Fridays here in the great state of Georgia. Gil Tyree along with my partner in crime, Trey McDaniel. Trey, we got a Lulu of a football game here tonight. We sure do. It's the region opener for both teams. GAC ranked number eight. Westminster two and four, Gil, but three of those losses against top ten football teams in the 3A classification. And we'll start with the Wildcats tonight. On offense, we get to spotlight someone we don't normally get to spotlight, Gil, and that's a place kicker. Harrison Butker, the senior, he's going to Georgia Tech. He perhaps is the best in the state, maybe one of the best in the entire country. He's made a 52-yarder already this season, but he's got the leg to make one from 60 and beyond. He also averages 46 yards per punt. He is by far the Wildcats' best weapon. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, Defensive end Joe Bridges gets the start tonight because Ross Johnston, who leads the team in sacks, is out with an injury. So Joe Bridges is forced to play both ways, not the norm. He is going to play almost every snap of this football game. The other 10 guys that accompany him on defense will have their hands full because Greater Atlanta Christian has a ton of weapons on offense. All right, we take a look at the Greater Atlanta Spartans, and of course they have a coaching change, but you know what? They still maintain that level of perfection. They sure do, and it starts in the same place it always does with the Spartans, and that's in the backfield. They've got a good one this year in Kyle Scales. He tore his ACL last year against Buford. He's back this year. Last year he was getting recruited by Oklahoma State and Miami before he went down with that injury. Over 600 yards on the ground, double digits and touchdowns. You flip to the other side of the football, and it's the guys I call the odd couple at inside linebacker. You've got a sophomore in Paul Carruthers, who Coach says is wide open all the time, high motor guy. He can't shut him up. He can't get him off the football field and then his counterpart Trevor Dedecker is a junior he's more of a student of the game he leads the team in solo tackles those two guys have a tough job tonight because the Westminster Wildcats are going to have eight or nine ball carriers on offense so that linebacking core all four of them for GAC going to be awfully busy tonight Gil. All right four quarters and then some here tonight now to the third member of our team John Nelson Nelly it's all yours. Thank you, GT. Good evening to you and Trey. What we're going to do, the same thing this week as we did last week. We're going to let you know how things are shaping up when it comes to regions, key regions in AAA, AA, and single A. When we talk about single A, you're going to need a math degree to figure it out. We'll also let you know how scores are going across the state. Early returns from down here. Camden up 13-0 on tip. Centennial leading Lambert early on 7-0. Johns Creek. 9-0 it was for Scythe. Let's send it upstairs to Gill and Trey. So Gill and Trey, take it away. All right, thank you very much, John Nelson. And let's take a look at our keys to success here tonight, Trey McDaniel. Well, we'll start with the Westminster Wildcats. The first thing they have to do, Gil, and both of these keys, by the way, are very much general team initiatives. They've got to be the best 11. It says bad 11, it's the best 11. He quoted something from Newt Rockney, did Coach Romber. He says, we don't want our 11 best players. We want our best 11 group of guys. Also, their playmakers have to make plays for Greater Atlanta Christian, and they've got to prove it. They're the number eight team in the AA classification. This is their first region game and their first game against a AA opponent. They've got to prove they're worthy of that ranking. All right, Westminster won the toss they have elected to defer and they will kick off and uh, Greater Atlanta will receive Greater Atlanta Christian but homecoming here on the great campus of Greater Atlanta Christian and of course Trey McDaniel and yours truly at Reynolds Field here in Spartan Stadium and uh, Trey I'll tell you what when you look at the series this is the ninth meeting series tied at four apiece and uh, last year of course GAC won big 49 to 10 and then the coaching change, and like we talked up top, the the mantra, the mission statement here, perfection continues under Coach Hardy. Yeah, Coach Hardy very much conscientious of how this football team blends in with the message here at the entire school, and that's academic excellence, football excellence, just in general excellence on and off the playing field. All right, Harrison Butker, the outstanding kicker for Westminster. Butker will kick off and back to receive for the Greater Atlanta Christian Spartans will be Peter Whiteneck and Micah Abernathy. Abernathy might be a name you remember. Yes, he's the grandson of the noted civil rights icon, Ralph Abernathy, and he has a great brother playing now 
at the University of Cincinnati. And a great night for football here in Norcross, and Butker puts toe into leather, and we are underway. It goes all the way in the back of the end zone, and Kyle Scales lets it go back in the end zone. So uh, the Spartans will take over Trey, first and 10 at their own 20. And you see there on our screen, Rafe Chapel, long lineage of quarterbacks with the Chapel name. He's the fourth brother to play here for Greater Atlanta Christian, and he is a very good one. If you see his stats there, 935 yards through the air can also carry the ball a time or two 10 touchdowns four interceptions that's a fantastic ratio this is an offense that first year coach tim hardy wants to be balanced and we say balance we really mean balanced. he really wants a 50 50 mix of run pass chapel leads them up to the line of scrimmage first and 10 at their own 20. and the snap sails over the head of chapel and pushed away from it but recovered at their own five yard line and on it looked like it was Scales who was Johnny on the spot, but that had disaster written all over it, Trey. Let's take a look at it, an instant replay. Yeah, the snap goes over his head, and you see Cameron Seward coming and pushing the quarterback down to try to get the ball, but Scales is in the right spot at the right time. It'll be a huge loss, but lucky for Greater Atlanta Christian Gill, this didn't turn into a turnover because Seward was right there to clean up the mess. It'll be second down and very long now for Greater Atlanta Christian. Very long is right, first and 25 at their own five, and you're, you're right, that snap had disaster written all over it. They're lucky they didn't get a safety or a touchdown. So they will line up now. First and 25, you see Scales in motion. And they dump off the little bubble screen. That Scales with running room ahead of him. Over the 30 and pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And that is a first down, Trey. Gil, anytime your free safety is making a tackle, for the most part, that's bad news, especially when it's downfield like that. But senior Hayes Meyer saved a touchdown. They did a great job here, Gil. This is what Greater Atlanta Christian wants to do. They want to get their athletes out in space. Coach Hardy said when we talked to him this week, they were going to make a concerted effort to do that. And he picked up the penalty yardage, excuse me, the mistake yardage uh -huh. from the previous snap and a lot more. Big first down there to get out of the shadow of their own goalpost. A 32-yard gain, first and 10 at the 42. You see scales and the interest he's drawn and a lot of schools on that list he's an outstanding good and tore an ACL last year and is back this year and that scales again straight ahead our starting lineups brought to you by our good friends at Regions Bank it's time to expect more take a look at the offensive line Bartolome one of two brothers here you see uh, Carson Cox from Ryan and you see Daniel Yu they're going to protect scales and also a chapel here tonight the offensive line and you take a look at the backfield scales the aforementioned scales the decker shea white neck and chris williams and again our lineup starting lineups regions back it's time to expect more let's take a look at westminster and they have that four three and of course uh, again the regions bank Brings you our starting lineups. It's time to expect more. Bridges Smith, Giza, and Love. And the linebacking core, Harrison Woodward, the leader there and the leading tackler. And you see Seward, who Trey mentioned earlier. And then the secondary for Coach Ron Bird. Third and three at the 45, 923 in the opening period. The Spartans at scale, sweeping around. The right side getting over the 45 up to about the 47. Graham Powell on the stop for the Wildcats of Westminster. That was a big time stop by the Westminster Wildcats on defense because after the long play to Scales, they really tightened up and only allowed Scales to gain a couple of yards on second down and then just stoned him there on third down. It was kind of a tag team effort there by the junior Graham Powell, number 39, and also the defensive tackle whose name we'll call a lot tonight, Gil, and that's number 75, the senior Clay Smith. He's a two-way starter, and he'll be all over the place tonight. So great job there, Just tightening up by the Westminster defense. All right, Westwood will punt at his own 30 and back to receive for Westminster, Cole Haverty. The snap, high, end over end kick, driving Haverty back, and he's gonna let it drop, and it's gonna fall in the end zone. A 55-yard punt by Wood. So an opportunity now for Westminster to get their first 
look at the football tonight. You get a look at Jake Forte, the quarterback. Some observations of him, Trey. Well, he's a multi-sport athlete, plays second base for their baseball team, and he's coming back from a concussion, Gil. Uh, he was out when they're with their last game. Luckily, they had a week off afterwards, so he's back playing this week for the first time after being out with a concussion. We'll see if there's any cobwebs here in the early going. All right, the Wildcats take over first and 10 at their own 20, and you see the man in motion right there. And we have flags and a whistle. And that was Forte on the carry, but uh, that's going to be brought back. And it's against Westminster. Trey, you take a look at uh, you see our fishing crew here tonight. Jerry Bush among those, and uh, Andy Hall, Mickey Sitton. Jerry Reynolds, Eric uh, Apollonis, and Noel Suarez, a great crew from the Georgia High School Association tonight. The penalty declined, so it'll be second and 10 at the 20. A 20 in the opening period here in Norcross. A spread look right now for the Westminster Wildcats, coached by Jerry Romberg, and of course, 21 years in coaching. His son Stone plays at Walton for Rocky Hidalgo, and he's also a phys ed teacher in a junior high at Westminster. Forte out in a flat and a pass intended over there. And it was incomplete. Our starting lineups brought to you by our good friends at Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. You take a look at the offensive line. Chapman, Riddle, and Clay Smith. Among those who will be blocking for Forte here tonight. You take a look at what's behind him. You see Walker. Nigel Walker, he's headed to Stanford, and an outstanding talent, Reed Love, Otley, and Bridges, and of course, Trey talked about Bridges up top, third and 10 at the 20. Again, Regions Bank, it's time to expect more, bringing you to starting lineups. Forte on the roll. He finds his receiver there, that's Hayes Meyer. Hayes Meyer is over the 25-yard line, up about to the 26-yard line. Take a look at the defense, the GAC Spartans. And Charles Edwards, the defensive coordinator. They run that 3-4. Bartolome heads that group up front. The Decker. Uh, Trey, talk to, talk to you about him and Carruthers. And also Slayton Wood, Pickens, and Paul Hill in the secondary again. Our starting lineup, Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Our first opportunity tonight to see... Harrison Butker on the punting end of things. We saw his first kickoff mm -hmm. of the game sail clear of the end zone. Looking to see him punting, averaging 46 yards per kick this season. All right, he'll punt at his own 14 and back to receive. Single man back is Kyle Scales awaiting at its 35. And again, a stoppage of play and flags. Trey, that's been a trend. We're now in the midway point of this season. We saw a lot in the Georgia Dome when we opened up play in the Corky Cal. And again, we're seeing it here tonight in all sides. Gil, this is a huge penalty mm -hmm. because it's encroachment on the defense, and the five-yard penalty will result in a first down. So your defense tightens up. They force a three and out, and now all of a sudden they've got to come back on the field because of the penalty, and you give Westminster another chance. When you're playing in a rivalry game like this, Gil, and in a region game like this, you can't afford to make mistakes like this. We'll see if it comes back to haunt them. All right, Forte will take over, and like Trey said, the encroachment penalty gives it back to the Wildcats of Westminster out of the shotgun. First and ten, you see the man in motion. And taking and sweeping around the right side, that's Seward. And he's still on his feet, close to midfield, and pushed out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. Gil Cameron Seward is the guy that Tim Hardy is very concerned with for the Greater Atlanta Christian defense because he is probably mm -hmm. their best athlete and he's by far their most versatile player. They're going to line him up all over the place and make a very concerted effort to get him the football we see right there on the end around mm -hmm. and kind of the jet sweep deep in the backfield. Look for us to call number eight's number and name a lot tonight. A gain of nine. It'll bring second and one at the 41. 7-10 in the opening period. We're scoreless here in Norcross on the campus of Greater Atlanta Christian. Up top, Forte looking for receiver and a jump ball, and the pass is complete to Jake Johnson into GAC territory at the GAC 39. 
Gil, you're going to hear us say two-way player, two-way player, two-way player a lot tonight for Westminster. One of their best, perhaps the best athlete on the entire team is Jake Johnson. Uh -huh. He's just a junior. Watch him go up and get that football. This guy also starts at cornerback, and he uses some of his cornerback skills right there, Gil, to go up, pull the ball down from the highest, highest and he out jumps Parker Polehill, the junior cornerback for GAC. Very athletic play. And it's the first first down that they gain on their own so far tonight. A gain of 20, as Trey said, and it's a first down at the 41 of GAC. 7.03 in the opening period. We are so glad to have you with us here tonight. Homecoming. And the outstanding staff here at uh, Greater Atlanta. Christian, Tim Vick and his staff. And Ms. Cisco works in the office. The secretary has been just uh, outstanding. And again, straight ahead to number 28, that's Connor Bennett on the grab, and he gets it close to the 35-yard line, about down to the 34. Yeah, we talked about having a lot of ball carriers for the Wildcats. Connor Bennett starts in the defensive backfield for Westminster, and he's not even listed on the depth uh -huh. chart at running back. You see what Jerry Romberg is trying to do. He's trying to keep fresh legs in there, and he's trying to keep the Greater Atlanta Christian defense guessing and not allow them to hone in on one particular guy. Forte brings his troops up second and six facing the long back is Seward behind him after the game by Bennett. The give and the fake give and the give I should say is to Seward and we have a flag on the play. He gets over the 35 yard line close to the 30. And we have a flag on the play and a caucus, and we have a holding against the Wildcats today. And that's going to hurt them. They've got a lot of momentum. And, Gil, I know it sounds a little bit premature after the penalty here. They're going to be somewhere around the 40-yard line. It uh -huh. seems premature, but they're darn near in Butker <laughs> territory here for a field goal. So Coach talked to us on the phone this week and said he worried that his offense kind of took their foot off the gas a little bit once they crossed into plus territory because they have such a great field goal kicker. We'll see if they keep their foot on the accelerator here as they've got the ball in GAC territory here on just their first possession of the game. Uh, we talk about, and we, we've mentioned Butker, of course, 8 of 15, 53%. His longest of the year so far has been 52, and he can boom it. He's headed to Paul Johnson's Georgia Tech, a rambling wreck, and they're looking forward to having him. Forte out of the shotgun in the flat to Seward. Dumps it off on the bubble screen. Gets close to the 40-yard line. And uh, over there was Abernathy. Paul Hill was over there as well on the stop. Yes, the sophomore inside linebacker that we spotlight at the top, Paul Carruthers, also in the neighborhood. They do a great job of double-teaming him here and Cameron Seward and kind of smothering him and not allowing him to get out in space. They did a great job right there. They're going to need to do more of that as the game wears on. You're going to see number eight checking in and out of the game just so they don't exhaust him because like we mentioned before, he plays linebacker on defense. He's going to be a busy man tonight. They get a chunk of that yardage back, make it third at 11 at the 41. 521 and counting down here at Norcross. Scoreless between the Spartans and the Wildcats. Forte in the pocket, looking over the middle. And the pass is incomplete, broken up, but was intended for Joe Bridges, and it falls incomplete. First attempt tonight to get the ball in the very talented tight end's hand, Joe Bridges. We talked about him playing every snap tonight because he's filling in on defense for Ross Johnston. Here he has a chance to catch the ball, but it is pretty good defense. And let's see if Coach attempts a punt here or goes for a 58-yard field goal. And it certainly looks like Butker is going to try to punt the ball, and they're going to try to play field position here, at least in the early going, Gil. Fourth and 11 at the 41, and as Trey said, Butker will line up to punt it. 5-11 to go. Nobody back. High snap, and Butker booms it. And it is drops right down in and put down at about the four-yard line where GAC will take over first and 10, a punt of 37. Downstairs, our first opportunity to speak to the great John Nelson. Nelly. Thank you, GT. Let's take a look at some of the action in AAA. Look at region standings right now in Region 2 coming into tonight and show you how things are going to shape out here. You look at the middle of that packet right there, Peach County and Carver-Columbus. They battle November 2nd. That's probably going to be the signature game in this particular region. But you look at the top, Central Macon, they're already 2-0, even though they're 2-4 and when it comes to regulation. Jesse Hicks, Jesse Hicks already doing a good job there. A couple of updates on scores really quickly. Parkview with a quick 7 on Valdosta. Carrollton and Sandy Creek already keeping their collision course up 7-14, and nothing respectively back upstairs. Nelly, I'm mad at you. You didn't mention our good buddy Del McGee at Carver-Columbus. That's scales with the football after the dump off 
from Chapel. He advances the football, gets close to the 20-yard line. Brought out and pushed out of bounds at about the 17. Trey. Here's that same play we saw in the exact same place on the field, but this time they run it to the offensive left side. And you see Scales, he's got some real shifting moves, Gil, but the, mo the thing that impresses me the most about him and impresses his coach the most is how many yards he gets after contact. He does a great job here with a big gain and a big first down. You're absolutely right. A gain of 12, and Harrison Woodward over there for the stop. On the game by 12 by the pass from Chapel to Scales. First and 10 at the 16. That's Chapel on the pitch, and that's Scales. And still moving forward. He's over the 20, up to about the 21. Yo, know, this is the theme now with high school offense. Some of what's been going on at the college level has trickled down to high school, and you really see true multiple offenses. We've seen them in the shotgun. We've seen them now in the true option. We've seen them sprint the quarterback out. They've also run that sawed-off shotgun, that pistol formation that we see so much. They're very multiple on offense, and when you have the weapons that Greater Atlanta Christian does, you can afford to do that, and it makes trying to defend it absolute nightmare for Westminster. You're absolutely right about the triple-down effects so a lot of that last night in the toy Western Kentucky football game. That scales, and he's moving. He's still on his feet. He's over the 40, 45, 50, in hot pursuit, and they still can't get him. He's still moving. He's in w Westminster territory and brought down at the 20-yard line. 49-yard run by Kyle Scales. Watch this move in the middle of the field as he just stomps on senior free safety Hayes Meyer, number 20, and then cuts to the outside. At one point, I thought he was gone. You see Bridges there try to make a shoestring tackle, and then out of nowhere comes the starting tailback, Niles Walker. Nigel Walker playing on defense for the right. first time tonight, mm -hmm. saving a touchdown. Nigel Walker, and of course, headed to Stanford and designs Trey. The T-shirts worn by the Westminster Wildcats. In fact, uh, sent a little text to uh, my good, good friend, Condi Rice, out in Stanford. Said, "Look out for the kid. He wants to walk on." He said he wants to walk on. As Chapel on the option, he's still on his feet. He's over the 20-yard line, still running downhill, down to about the 15. And a nice option, Reed Love on the stop for the Wildcats. Yeah, for the first time tonight, you see that Reed option. So uh -huh. you've seen four or five different formations, and they've ran four or five different plays out of those formations so far tonight. Chapel doing a great job commanding the troops so far. Down in the red zone for the first time tonight for Greater Atlanta Christian. And a little bit more about Mr. Walker. He's a physics major, Trey. Huh? huh? At Westminster. I don't understand any of that stuff. <laughs> Second and six at the 16. The Spartans are driving. And that's Chapel. And that pass was batted down. And the big mitts was Clay Smith, six foot three, 217 pounds. And Joe Bridges was over there too, Trey. Not sure who actually got their paw on it. One of those two guys at the top of your screen there. Looked like it actually was Bridges. If he didn't knock it down, Smith was going to. They were trying to get the ball out to their playmaker, the junior Chris Williams on the outside. That was their first time tonight that they've tried to get the ball to him on offense. His counterpart, number eight, Cameron Seward, and Chris Williams will both be wearing number eight and both be very busy on the offensive side for their respective teams tonight. All right, the Decker and Scales form the eye and rolling out as Scales, and he has a receiver there in the flat and taking it down to the five was Chris Williams. And it's going to be first and goal. So they saw something before, and even though they got the pass knocked down last time, here they avoid that by sprinting Chapel out to the right and basically running the same play, and they were finally able to get the ball into Williams' hands. Very dynamic player, sets up a first down and goal. First and goal at the five, a gain of 11. And we welcome back our statistician. We lost him to baseball for a couple weeks, but we're glad to have him back. Kevin Barnes, KB, glad to have you in the booth here tonight. 2.37 in the opening quarter, Gil Tyree. Trey McDaniel and our good buddy John Nelson also want to say happy birthday to our vice president of production Steve Carey first and goal and that's a give to scales for the Spartans he moves a pile down inside the one to the one foot line that'll make it second and goal to 11 of the opening period Westminster Greater Atlanta Christian homecoming here in Norcross. Second and goal at the three. You 
see Rafe Chapel, a fourth generation here at uh, Greater Atlantic Christian. And that is Scale smelling the end zone. Did he get in? No. He's at the one. He had that end zone smelling it out, Trey. He couldn't get in. Yeah, they come out and try to spread out the Westminster defense here by putting no tight ends in the game, two wide receivers to each side and in a shotgun formation, but they still give it to their playmaker up inside, and it looks like they're doing some personnel changes here, going to more of a heavy package. Uh -huh. You see him bringing in Trevor Dedecker, the fullback, who was out on the previous play because of the four wide receiver formation. Right, Dedecker and Carruthers both. Or in there, scales behind them, the full house, and that's a quarterback sneak by Chapel. Is he in? They push the pile. We're waiting word. They're going to mark him just shy, Gil, according to the line judge there on the right side. When you see him put that right mm -hmm. hand up in the air, that means he's spotting the ball. They're saying the quarterback sneak didn't get in, and this is a heck of a defensive stand by Westminster. Right. They are outsized on the defensive line, so the fact that they're able to get leverage here and stop GAC from getting in the end zone on three straight attempts inside the five-yard line is a really big deal. We get a shot at Tim Hardy, the head coach, and also the offensive coordinator here. Looks like, gonna, looks like they're going for it. Yeah. You see the time upstairs. That's what's left here in the opening quarter. Tenth play of this drive. Full house backfield behind Chapel. The Spartans. The pitch to Scales. He cuts. He's still on his feet. Is he in? Yes. Touchdown. G A C. Gil, you could read that from a mile away. Despite the size advantage by GAC, they've been stonewalled inside the five-yard line. They come back with that heavy package, which when you've got scales in the backfield, you could read pitch all the way, and that's exactly what they did. They got up field right there to try to wall him off, but he was able to cut inside a very good block, and the second effort got him in the end zone. Our touchdown replay brought to you by TCSG, Technical College System of Georgia. Learn more, earn more. The extra point is up by Holsgrief. It looks good, and it is good. So it is GAC courtesy of that gentleman who draw first blood here tonight. Our score, GAC 7 and Westminster nil. You're watching GPB's exclusive coverage of Football Fridays here in Georgia. A look at Kyle Scales who scored the opening touchdown. GAC out in front 7-0. Our scoring drive brought to you by our good friends of TCSG. Learn more and more. Trey. A great drive. 10 plays, 96 yards. They were able to eat up some time. And by the looks of that, just the graphic, you think they probably drove down the field very methodically on the ground. But actually, they did a great job of what exactly what Coach Hardy wants to do. And that's 50-50 run pass mix and when you've got the kind of talent that GAC does you can pull that off I thought Westminster did a great job inside the five yard line stopping them on three consecutive tries with the heavy package there from Greater Atlanta Christian but the fourth time turned out to be the charm for GAC and now they get the early lead seven to nothing all right Holsgrief will boom it out again our good friends at TCSG learn more earn more And advancing the football up to about the 22-yard line was Cole Haverty. So the Wildcats in a hole right now. 7-0 and will be directed by their outstanding quarterback, Jake Forte. And they'll be first and 10 at the 26. They trail 7-0. Coach Romberg was very complimentary of his quarterback this week, said he's really starting to let the game sort of come to him and not force things. Forte in the shotgun, and the Wildcats showing a spread look. With a man in motion. And the field straight ahead. First and 10 for Westminster. Forte dropping back, and he has a receiver, and it is complete. And the receiver out there was James Sanders, a sliding James Sanders into GAC territory at the 40. Tremendous play fake right here. Great job by Forte, hiding the ball perfectly. A little bit underthrown. Nice adjustment on the ball there by Sanders and Westminster going to the air here early. That's Forte's fourth pass completion in just six attempts. That's Forte's Forte. How about that? You like that, throwing that football? Need somebody up here with the rim shot. Uh, yeah. working, on working on that short passing game, but that was a gain of 29 and puts it at the 44 of GAC. You see the man in motion, first and 10 for the Wildcats. And they give straight ahead that Seward. He's spinning, and he is brought down at about the 35-yard line, in on the stop 
was uh, Mitchell Malovich on the stop. So Malovich on the stop, and that was a gain. That was close to first down yardage, Trey. It was. was. a gain of seven. They're going to be just shy, Gil, and looks like they're going to mark off a penalty here on Westminster, so it'll oh, undo it a back. little bit of that good work. Negate that drive. On the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. We play first down. Had a couple guys moving uh -huh. at the same time, Gil, once they, once they went set. And we'll see, being in GAC territory here, if Westminster can, like we talked about before, put their foot on the gas. This is normally the neighborhood where their drives stall, but they've been able to move the ball well, but we haven't seen them down in the red zone yet tonight. First and 10 at the 48. In fact, Coach Ron Berg was telling us in the flat, and that's Seward on the bubble screen, and it's complete. He gets it over the 50-yard line, crosses midfield, and into GAC territory at about the GAC 47. And Jake Rose among those on this stop. You see both teams rotating in an awful lot of guys. A lot of guys, Gil, that aren't even on our two uh -huh. deep. You can tell both coaches are making a strong effort to keep their players fresh. They know this is a 48-minute game, and Coach Romberg told us he doesn't think he's really got a 48-minute, full 48-minute effort out of his team so far this year. Second and 14 at the 49. At Forte, keeping it. Running downhill, gets close to the 40-yard line, about to the 43. It was a good run, Gil, but they did throw a flag okay. right around the 50-yard line. Would be in the neighborhood of a hold. We'll see what the call is. And it looks like they're bringing it back. They're going to march it back. And you're exactly right, Trey McDaniel. It really takes away another good run, probably the best run of the night by Forte. You see Coach Romberg is fit to be tied right now because his team's, to, to a large degree on this possession, really shooting themselves in the foot. They're able to the play uh, there's a hold on the offense. 10 yards and by the foul. Replay second down. They're really able to move the ball well against Greater Atlanta Christian despite being undersized. That's something mm -hmm. we'll talk about a lot tonight. Right. They've really played well as a team, but these penalties, they got to knock this stuff off. This is not how you beat the number eight team in your classification. You got a shot of Coach Romberg. Then you see his counterpart at GAC, Coach Hardy. want to give a shout out to Coach Romberg's parents. They're watching us on GPB.org in Northern Virginia tonight. He told me, give him a shout out, Gil. We just did. Forte over the middle of the pass is incomplete. And that was about at midfield. So the Wildcats will have another opportunity. There's Coach Romberg, and of course we talked about it up top, Trey, his son Stone. A good wide at, receiver mm -hmm. at Walton. Very Rocky good. Adago for the Raiders, and uh, he told me, he said, Gil, I'm going to try to catch him on that off week, and of course, next up for Walton, they play Milton. And I asked him how many games. He says, I only get an opportunity to see him when we have some off weeks, or when they play one night, and we play one night, but he is a dad who keeps in touch with his son. Third and 24 at the 41. That's Forte. And that ball is tipped. And the pass was intended for on the sweep on the was Connor Bennett. But it falls incomplete, so it'll bring up a punting situation for the Wildcats, and Butker will come in. You see, they try to set up the uh -huh. screen. They had only the fullback in the backfield in Reed Love. Milovic broke up that pass and back to receive for GAC. Peter Whiteneck and Kyle Scales. Scales will stand at about his own 23. Butker gets it off and that was almost blocked by Abernathy. And a backtrack and Scales takes it at his 15. Still on his feet, spinning and falls his way. Gets over the 25 yard line up to the 26 forward progress and we have a flag on the play 44 yard punt by Butker John Nelson hello again hello GT hello Trey let's take a look at action in five triple a when it comes to this region and look at the top you'll see some familiar faces Frank Barden and the Purple Hurricane of Cartersville right up top they're going to square off against Gordon Central the last week of the regular season and you see that log jam when it comes to the four seed that's going to come down to the end as well a couple of scores of note Actually, there are scores where there are zeros on the board. McEachern and South Cobb, Tucker and Stevenson are scoreless. Camden now up 20 to nothing on Tiff County second quarter in the web game. Blessed Trinity up 21 nothing on Decatur back upstairs. Mercy, mercy me. And of course, we'll see the Tucker Tigers next week at uh, Holford Stadium. They take on my good buddy Buck 
Godfrey and the uh, Southwest DeKalb. All right, explain to me, Trey. Break it down. We have a penalty on the play. For what? Yeah, it's a block in the back on Westminster, so they tacked 10 yards from where Scales went down. He went down at the 25-yard line. They moved the ball up to the 35-yard line, and so a lot of penalties here in the last few minutes for Westminster. They've committed four on the night so far, and we're just barely into the second quarter. First and 10 at the 35 for GHC. They lead here 7-0 courtesy of the touchdown by Scales. The fake give to Scales. And rolling out his chapel, and he's going to get nailed and stuffed. And we have again flags on the play at up at the 35-yard line. Gil, we actually have three flags on the play. I think the initial might have been a, a face mask on the pass rusher. They raked Chapel across the face. Then another one came in late back there behind the line of scrimmage and went all the way down here on the near side, uh -huh. near where the corner and, and wide receiver were going at it around the 50-yard line. They've got a lot to sort out here. Joe Bridges among those on the stop, and like Trey said, they are sorting it out, the officials, as we speak. So after all that, it's just a face mask. You see Chapel made a really nice play fake, similar to the one his counterpart made, Forte did, on his previous uh -huh. possession. But they rake him across the face mask, so he goes down. They'll tack even more yardage on. That's now five penalties on Westminster. That looked like Giza. On the defense, five yards from the end of the run, replay first down. All right, they're replayed 78. Coach Romberg does not like that. He's going to come out of his skin if this mm -hmm. continues because his team, execution-wise, is doing a pretty good job as far as assignments go, but they're just committing way too many penalties. He wants his defense to be aggressive. And Coach Hardy mentioned that's the one thing he was concerned about with his offense is stopping the upfield pass rush for Westminster, and they got a pass rush there, but they got to not commit that penalty. Chapel facing first and 10 at the 40. And that was a direct snap to Abernathy, who gave it to, to uh, look like Correct me, that's uh, Scales going over the 40-yard line close to midfield, but that was a direct snap to Abernathy off the Wildcat. And we see and a flag on the play again, Trey. So. Yeah, another wrinkle here for Greater Atlanta Christian. Pull another rabbit out of their hat with Abernathy lined up in the Wildcat at quarterback and once again getting it out on the edge, which is where they want Kyle Scales. That's where he's the most dangerous because he's, he's a very fast guy. So far, he's shown the ability to get on the edge but yet another penalty. Really bogging down the second quarter here with all these flags on the field. Lots of them to be exact. A lot of yellow. You saw a graphic earlier. And that looks like it's against Westminster. They're marching it off, Trey. This is a big one. Non-player and sportsmanlike foul on the defense 15 yards from the succeeding spot the assessment results in a first down that's their sixth penalty for 60 yards Gil, and they said a non-player unsportsmanlike uh -huh. so i don't know if they got one of the coaches on the sideline screaming at the officials i've never heard an explanation given like that as a non-player unsportsmanlike we'll see if we can get that sorted out either way westminster is really their own worst enemy here and has been for the last five minutes of this football game well they've taken a timeout to sort it all out and 933 in the second quarter as we approach halftime let's go down to grace olson grace hello and good evening to you thanks gil for all of you social media fans out there we've got so much set up for you to be a part of this game we've got our twitter account up and rolling as always make sure to use hashtag gpb sports and your tweets may roll on the big screen now we do have a live online poll question for you to answer tonight the question is should do sports related video games improve athletic abilities tell us what you think online at gpb.org sports and we'll give you those results later on in the show back to you guys in the booth all right grace we missed you last week and uh you look pretty good in that baseball you know warm up didn't she Trey? huh yeah she's a lot simulating that, that we baseball than <laughs> i am <laughs> That's a great question, too. How do you feel about that, Trey? I think video kids games need to get their tail outside. That's what I did when I was a kid. Get out of the house. Get active. Get out of the house and get active. I don't see anything against mm -hmm. video games, but video games as babysitters just doesn't work for me. You tell them, Trey, that Danny, it's an you okay. tell them. I don't want to get up on my high horse, but, you know, get outside and play. Breathe, out, breathe in some fresh air. And you saw a look 
of disgust on Jerry Ronberg, and that's his counterpart, Tim Hardy, over on the GAC sidelines. And, uh, first and ten right now at the 37 of Winsminster for the Spartans, who are leading 7 0. Lone back with Chapel is Scales. And let's see who with that. That's Abernathy again. They work the Wildcat. He gets over the 35 yard line down to about the 34. So you see. Chapel is in the right. game, Gil, but mm -hmm. he's split out. And so they bring Abernathy, the sophomore, in. You already talked about his lineage right. and his family, his brother playing at Cincinnati. And they bring him in in the Wildcat. They're doing everything they can right now to get their playmakers the football. But I don't think until that play that they gained a yard on this possession that wasn't the benefit of a penalty by Westminster until the last play. Chapel. You see Abernathy, Mike Abernathy, the sophomore in motion. The give us the scales, a little stop and go move. It takes it down to the 30, down to about the Westminster 29. You know, in week two, Scales and Butker Trey were honored by the Atlanta Touchdown Club. Same yeah, night. Talking, and, and they knew about talking that yeah, episode. There was a lot of trash talking that <laughs> night. And of course, uh, yeah. And uh, the the trash talking was at the Hudson Grill, and we see a flag on the play, and again explanation right now of what's going on. Illegal shift on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, replay second down. All right, so we'll replay the second down. It'll make it second and seven at the 35, 8:48, and the Spartans. Nelly, what about that last penalty? Let's go back one play. It was actually, when it was a non-player, it was a coach who actually had his foot on the field of play. And they were really paying attention to that stuff over there, so that cost them 15 huge. You're telling me, Trey, they were paying attention. Second and 12 at the 40. Out of the shotgun is Chapel. Plenty of time. Rolling left. Finds a receiver, and it's dropped. The pass intended up at about the 35-yard line was Chris Williams, and it falls incomplete. Watch the arm here for Chapel. Wisely gets out of the pocket and puts one right on the number eight, right on Williams' chest. Might have been a little bit too much mustard on that. I don't think Chris Williams was quite expecting it to come in that hot, but a nice, accurate throw. Chapel, nice pocket presence there. Gill rolling out, feeling the pressure and getting outside, but it is going to bring up a, a big third down and long here for Greater Atlanta Christian. Third and long, you see Slayton to the near side. And Chapel, he's going to keep it over the 40. Moves forward, and he is pushed back. And forward progress took him by the 41, but he was pushed back by Nelson Douglas on the tackle for the Wildcats. And that'll bring up a punting situation. Yeah, we talked about Spartans. Excuse me, we talked a lot about number 49, J Joe Bridges, the junior who's starting in place of Ross Johnson. He's the one that comes up field and does his job right here. His job is to contain, not necessarily to make the tackle, but to come up and drive the player inside so Nelson Douglas can come up and make that tackle. He did a great job right there. Ross Wood will punt at his own 45 and back to receive is Cole Havery. He's at his own 10. Bouncing punt, he'll pooch it and rugby style it. And it'll take a bounce and barrel in the end zone. So taking over first and then a 40-yard punt for Wood. So taking over first and 10 will be. We'll take a break with the score. First and 10 at the 20. Westminster, they trail. 7-0 here in Norcross on the campus of Greater Atlanta Christian. GAC shows blitz. Taking the football at Seward. He gets over the 20, up to about the 22. And over there on the stop for GAC. Was Chris Williams. That was well played defensively uh -huh. for Greater Atlanta Christian because they faked run blitz there with Trevor DeDecker in the B gap on the defensive right side. 
and coming upfield to make the tackle was actually the outside linebacker, Chris Williams, did a great job right there. Ben Lorick over there as well in the slot right now. You see, and in motion for Westminster is Hayes Meyer. And they give it to Hayes Meyer on the end around, and it smelled out, and he got nothing. In fact, he may have lost a couple. Trevor DeDecker among those on the stop. You know, this is the guy we spotlighted at the top. His coach said he's probably the most mature guy on the team, very academic, a, a student of the game, but he also leads the team in solo tackles, and you see right there, they'll get a couple of assists, but it was largely his effort getting up the field in the backfield. He sniffed out the reverse almost immediately with Hayes Meyer. See signals from the bench. Calling out what alignment that's kind of creative getting close to Halloween, huh? Trey? <laughs> that seems pretty <laughs> ominous. Yes, it does. Oh, Sculling crossbones. Forte. Looking. Throws it up top. And the intended receiver is Myers. A little jump ball and it falls incomplete. Defending over there was uh, Pole Hill. So it falls incomplete. So it'll be three and out. And Westminster will have to punt it. Parker Polehill was the young man that got out jumped by Jake Johnson earlier in the game. Watch him have inside position here as a cornerback against Hayes Meyer, a very talented wide receiver. Polehill plays this textbook cornerback, even gets shoved there at the last second. Great defensive play by number five. Back to receive. White neck and Kyle Scares. I know, it doesn't, I know it doesn't come across on TV, Gil, but the last two punts by Butker have been absolutely beautiful. Butker standing at his own four. And he booms it. And Scales will take it at his own 45. A flag on the play over midfield. Scales still on his feet and moving. Getting over the 35, down to the 30, inside the 30, down to about the 28. But we have a flag and we, we may bring it back. A you know, punt of 39 yards and a return of 35. Whenever you see a flag on a kick, you, you've got to assume block in the back. And it is going to come back, yo. John Nelson, what up? <laughs> region, next region on the board, GT, is region six, AAA. You're already seeing some separation when it comes to the top and the bottom of the ladder. Here's how it is right now. St. Pius and Cedar Grove, they're going to play last week of the regular season. It's probably going to decide one and two. Blessed Trinity having no problems with Decatur tonight on GPB.org. A couple of scoring updates. And you wonder how I get all these scoring updates is because you get on one of those like iPads and they call, they have, there's an app for that. And so that's what I'm using, our GPB Sports app right here. I don't want to shine it right in everybody's eyes to get you squinting the rest of the day. But here's some updates from Gwinnett County. Norcross leading Collins Hill, 21-7 second quarter. Hab Central in the second quarter leading Meadow Creek, 7-6. Peachtree Ridge in a must-win situation at the half leading Mountain View 10-6. Here's a shock, here's a shock to some. Mill Creek 14-10 at home against North Gwinnett, second quarter. Archer shutting out Central Gwinnett, second quarter. Also Brookwood, no problems with Shiloh and Grayson, no problems with Burkmar back upstairs. All right, John, and uh, to pick you back off about that app, up to minute scores, full season schedules, rankings, a whole lot more. It's a new app. It's a perfect way to keep up with all your favorite Georgia high school football teams and then some. Get the iPad or iPhone app today. The best part of it's free. Download it and enjoy it. And a first down for GAC. There you see that great app. Download the app for your iPhone and iPad today. It is free. And you get a scores. And John set up to minute scores, full season schedules, rankings, and so much more. It's a perfect way to keep up with all your favorite Georgia high school football teams for the entire year. That was a gain of nine. It'll be second and one, Trey, for GAC at the 45. And in motion is Abernathy. They throw it in the flat, and that's Abernathy with the great speed, and the sophomore is still on his move and still going inside the 30 down to about the 26. A 26-yard gain, and on the stop, Cole Haverty. Jake Johnson also over there. We've seen this play a lot tonight. They did it on the goal line earlier in the game in the first quarter twice. 
once to the right, once to the left with Kyle Scales. They've also done it with Chris Williams. Now we see it with Abernathy for the uh -huh. first time tonight. They have the speed advantage, and they're doing a very good job of getting on the edge, Gil. Big time run. Right. Jake Johnson comes up from the corner position, number 17, and saves a touchdown. All right, you took the words out of my mouth. I wanted to say Johnson instead of Haverty. A gain of 26 and off the sweep and going downhill. And the stop is made by Bridges. And Abernathy takes it down to about the 30. Gil, one thing about Abernathy, although he's only rushed for about 250 yards this season, he's coming off back-to-back -back weeks where he racked up 60-plus yards. And he's another one of those guys that we'll see on both sides of the ball, getting work done on the offense. Second and 11 at the 31. 7-0 GAC. A spread look by the Spartans alone back at Scales. They throw over and the pass is incomplete. The intended receiver over there was Peter Whiteneck and it goes incomplete. Yeah. So they'll try it again. Peter Whiteneck and Ross Wood were both over there. It was a pretty muddy situation. It was probably a blessing for Chapel. I'm not sure if it was on purpose or not, but he sailed that one out of bounds. Had he not, Jake Johnson had squatted on the route and was ready to pick that one off and take it to the house. So a wise decision by Chapel if that was in fact on purpose just to air it out of bounds and live to play another down, although that another down is third down and very long. 339. As we approach halftime in what was a fast-moving first quarter and equally fast here in the second quarter. Chapel in the shotgun is going to keep it. Going downhill to pitch to, and that looks in stride and offense, and that scales, and he's in for the touchdown. 31 yards. Kyle scales on the option after the pitch. You see our touchdown replay brought to you by TCSG. You don't often see an option or any kind of pitch to the short side of the field, but when you got a player like Kyle Scales, he tiptoes down the near sideline in for the touchdown. First real big play we've seen tonight. Look at the pitch, and he just straddles the sidelines and tiptoe to the tulips, folks. And the extra point is up, and it's good. Our touchdown replay brought to you by our good friends at G. TC, SG, learn more, earn more. And Mr. Scales has had quite a night. His second touchdown on the night so far, 11 carries, 107 yards, five plays, 65 yards. The elapsed time of our drive. And our drive, the scoring drive, brought to you by TCSG. And learn more, earn more. Here's the deal, but on 50s. Five plays, 65 yards, the elapsed time, two minutes and three seconds. Brought to you again by TCSG. Learn more, earn more. 14 0. You know, that young man came into this game already with double digit touchdowns, 10 to be exact, already with 12. And we still have three minutes and 30 uh -huh. seconds to go here in the second quarter. Westminster desperately needs to put some kind of points on the board so that they don't get into blowout range and start to have these 16, 17-year-old kids get demoralized. They really need to answer back here with some kind of points. They've got the field goal kicker to do it, but of course, Coach Romberg would love to have a touchdown here. 13-0 here in Norcross. The Spartans have increased their lead. And sure, with the football turns the corner, and he gets over the 20 up to about the 22. So Westminster and then 14-0 hole trade with 317 left until halftime. We'll try to climb out. GPB all over the place tonight. Great crew arriving here early. Sign next to Old Glory. One of the most beautiful high school campuses you will see anywhere. They and do a very hospitable uh -huh. bunch. I've never seen a more gracious group of people to have us at their facility. It's been great being here. And we give a shout out to Tim Vick and his outstanding staff, his secretary, Ms. Cisco, who's been on it all week long and helped us out on the sweep and turning the corner to Westminster. And still on his feet is Hayes Meyer. And he's pushed out of bounds. Over the 35, up to about the 37-yard line. That'll be a first down for Westminster. Yeah, Abernathy grabs him by the jersey and slings him out of bounds. Hayes Meyer looked like he might have been hemmed in here. For a second, I thought he wanted to pull up and maybe throw the ball. Nice stiff arm there, but way to stick with it by Abernathy, but not before. Hayes Meyer picks up a big first down. A gain of 14, first and 10 at the 34, 309 until halftime. Forte with the eye. 
and rolling out and still with it. It's Forte looking for a receiver and has Meyer, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 45 and moves it and extends it up to about the 47-yard line. Boy, what a big-time play here by the junior quarterback, Jake Forte. Watch him. Bodies flying everywhere. Great job by the other white shirts back there to make the blocks, and it couldn't have been a more accurate pass here to Hayes Meyer. Hayes Meyer really getting his number called a lot here for the Westminster offense. One of the few things that's been working tonight for the Wildcats, they need to keep going to that well, Gil, because they're driving. Ross Wood on the stop, first and 10 at the 46. Out of the shotgun is Forte. And he gives it to Seward, and they push the pile. He's in the GAC territory, about at the GAC 49. It was a rugby scrum after that. Among them emerging from the pile was number 54, Bartholomew, Andrew Bartholomew, in the stop. And that'll be a gain of about five, make it about second and five. You see Seward here just going into yeah. bulldozer mode, lowering his head, running over his own offensive lineman, and Carruthers and Dedeck are a great yeah. shot of those two inside linebackers that we talked about at the top, having to really get down low and cut off Seward's momentum, but he picked up five. Second and five at the 49. You see the man in motion in the eye behind Forte. Play fake looking long and has a receiver out on the right flat, and that is almost picked off. And down there defending on the play was Pole Hill. Boy, Parker Pole Hill. Another great job. He has safety help over the uh -huh. top, but he plays this perfectly. Goes up again at the highest point. We saw earlier in the fourth quarter, Jake Johnson out jump Pole Hill to pull down a long pass for Westminster. But the past two times they've gone jump ball, Pole Hill's been in the right spot at the right time. Not a tall guy, not a big guy, Gil. 5'9", 150. But there's a reason why he's lined up out there out there at cornerback. He's done a great job tonight. You get a look at uh, Parker Pole Hill, and, of course, the attendant receiver was Johnson, and it falls incomplete. That'll bring up a third and five at the 49. 2.14 as we approach the two-minute mark. Got a lot going on at halftime with Mark Harmon, John Nelson, and Grace Olson, and our outstanding crew down there in the end zone getting ready for you. You know, this offensive line for Westminster has done a great job tonight. There's been a lack of continuity with that group because they've been hit by the injury bug. But so mm -hmm. far tonight, they've done a very good job. You really haven't seen Jake Forte in too much trouble back there right. in passing situations. To the near side is Hotley. In the slot is Johnson. And right now, the man in motion is Reed Love. Third and five, 13 nothing. GAC out in front courtesy of two touchdowns by Kyle Scales. And they're working and on getting the clock. Adding more time on that clock, you're exactly right. Play clock showing 22, now 23. And rolling out, Forte, and has a receiver, that's Johnson. Over the 40, over the 35, down to about the 32 yard line. And over there on the stop was Micah Abernathy. And Darius Slayton was over there as well. Really tough for a right-handed quarterback to roll out to his left and throw an accurate pass, but he puts just enough touch on this to get it over the linebacking core, drops it right into the hands of Jake Johnson. They've made a real a real concerted effort to try to get the ball to both Hayes Meyer and Jake Johnson. They're two mm -hmm. talented wide receivers. That might have been the best throw of the night for Forte. You're absolutely right. A gain of 15, first and 10 at the 34. Loading up again, and then they give it on the little Statue of Liberty play that was Johnson after the completed pass by Forte, and then they give the sword, and he advances it down over the 25, down to about the 23. I love it, Gil. You never see the hook in lateral anymore, and you saw it right here. Johnson to Seward. They do a great job of getting him out of bounds. Only giving up an eight yard gain. You might see that play a little bit later in the game, especially if this one's close. They're working on it in their mock game yesterday. A lot of tricks up their sleeve for Coach Ron Berg and company. They trail 13 0. 203 as we approach the two minute mark. Second and three at the 34 for the Wildcats. Out of the shotgun, it's Forte. The high snap and running downhill is Seward with open space still on his feet. Over the 15, down to the 14-yard line. You know, if we see a replay of this, you'll see right guard number 70, the senior Jack Hawk, and the fullback, Reed Love, who's right up by Jack Hawk's rear end there. 
One of them goes one way, one of them goes the other way. They seal off a lane there for Seward. That's the best block run play they've had all night for Westminster. They're, they're getting this drive exactly when they need it, Gil. First and 10 at the 15 for Westminster. A drive going really good right now. Forte, slot receiver is Johnson, and it goes incomplete. They had him on the post route, and it falls incomplete. Nice call, Trey. Yeah, in the red zone. Absolutely. Johnson might not know it because Abernathy was behind him, and of course Johnson doesn't have eyes in the back of his head, but if he doesn't get his right arm up on this, Abernathy probably intercepts this pass. So good for him that he knocked the ball up in the air and out of bounds. Otherwise, it could have been a costly turnover. So the Wildcats will try again. Second and 10 at the 15, and Coach Ron Berg on the conference call told Trey and John Nelson and yours truly, we have problems in the red zone. And you saw... One snapshot of that just a few minutes ago. They'll try it again at second and 10 at the 16. We have stoppage of play and a timeout. You know, one of the reasons why they're struggling in the red timeout. zone is they have depth issues. And we've talked a little bit about that because the injury bug has hit them. And because they have depth issues, they have no more tight ends. They cannot bring in a two tight end formation and go with a heavy package in the red zone. So they're having to air it out. And right now they're not able to execute with the short field in the passing game. All right, Nelly, what you got going on at halftime? What's up for us, huh? Well, at halftime, we're going to talk about the toughest region in the state, if not in the entire country. But let's talk about a region that a lot of folks in northeast Georgia are paying attention to, Region 7 AAA. It's the next one on the board that we're going to take a look at. Buford and White County. You see the top of the ladder there, Buford, North Hall, and White. That's the separation for 1, 2, and 3 right now. Buford and White County are playing tonight, Buford having no problems at White County and they end the regular season at North Hall or with North Hall. So with everything going on at Bob's Brickyard, it's going to be really interesting to see how Region 7 AAA shows up. And speaking of other scores, as we talk about the app, Woodward Academy, no problem with Towers, second quarter, 48 to nothing. North Hall leading Fannin County, 26 nothing in the second. Oconee County and Hart County, Hart leading 13 to nothing. And there's a lot of other action going on. We'll have some scores for you at the half, along with Grace Olson, Mark Harmon, and all the rest of the cast of characters coming up on the greatest halftime show. What's the word, Gil? Bar none. Thank and of you. course, There's a hashtag so, there as well. There you go. And I want to add on to that marching band's rent check and Are You Smarter in John's, Georgia. And just a reminder, you can download that app. It's free on your iPhone and iPad today. And of course, there is now the great app, App to Minute Scores, Season Schedules. And it's a good way to keep up with your favorite Georgia high school football team. Looking in the end zone, and it's picked off. And he's going to come out of it, come to the end zone, and that's Slayton. Slayton still with the football on his feet. And it was picked off by Slayton, and he brings it close to the 40-yard line, but they had a little razzle-dazzle tray, and Slayton was there, and he read it perfectly. He'll remember a couple of plays ago when Hayes Myers ran out to his left, and I thought it looked like for a second he might want to throw the ball. Well, maybe he did, because they come right back to it. They run. Hayes Meyer out to the uh -huh. right. The quarterback sprints down the sideline here, and they try to get him the ball. The corner is not fooled at all. Darius Slayton, uh -huh. just a sophomore, but playing like a senior right there, picking the ball off. And you really want your sophomore not to bring the ball out of the end zone there, but it paid off big time. They bring it all the way back to the 40-yard line. And with just a minute 21, not only do they save points, they got plenty of time to try to put more on the board for their team. You get a good ground shot of it. He took it nine yards out of the end zone. Nine yards deep, Trey. Brought it out for a 49-yard return. The pick, it makes it first and 10 for GAC at their own 40-yard line. The play fake and loading up and looking long, and he has a receiver out there, and that is going to be Williams, and that is a touchdown. GAC, 60 yards in the air, Chris Williams. Gil, you know, that is exactly what you do after a big turnover when you're up two touchdowns. You go for the death blow. And here you get it, brought to you by TCSG. Coach said his most explosive player by far is Chris Williams. Right after the turnover, the very first play, 60 yards, untouched, to the house. All of a sudden, GAC up 20 to nothing. Outstanding pass, a great play call by Rafe Chapel. And holds grief on for the extra point. It looks good, and it is good. One play, 60 yards, the elapsed time, uh, 10 seconds, and they get the, they were beneficiaries of that pick by Darius Slayton, 
would set up the home run bomb. And right just like that, 20 to nothing. And that is a back, backbreaker trade. It is. And I love that call after a turnover because you get a gift in a turnover. And so you don't necessarily have to be conservative in that situation. You've got Chris Williams, one of the fastest players on the field. And Gil, I know I keep going back at this, but when you've got guys like Chris Williams and Scales and Abernathy and those type of guys, they've been able to do exactly what they said they wanted to do with their game plan. And that was use their speed to spread out the mm -hmm. Westminster offense. They take a deep shot and it pays off. You saw the scoring drive brought to you by our good friends at TCSG. Learn more, earn more. And two plays, Trey, 109 yards. The 49-yard pick by Slayton. And then the 60-yard touchdown pass and run from Chapel to Williams. And just like that, it's 20 to nothing. GAC. zone so Westminster will take over first and 10 at their own 20. Did you know GPB Sports has a Facebook page? Check us out and like us and be part of the GPB Sports family. See behind the scenes pictures get the info of the football games around the state like us and we'll love you more than we all read the do. And I'll tell you you know who wrote that promo? Our outstanding one of our outstanding employees John Sherrock. John, thank you. First and ten for the Rockets. And that is Bennett off the screen from Forte. He moves the ball over the 30 up to about the 32. And the Wildcats in a hurry up now, Trey, trying to make something happen. They're down in a big hole, 20 to nothing, under a minute to go until halftime. Yeah, if their previous possession was dire, this possession uh -huh. is even more dire. They've got to put some points on the board just from a confidence standpoint. And maybe we'll get to see Harrison Butker with his first field goal attempt of the night if they can move the ball into Forte plus territory. Forte rolls right as a receiver. And that is complete up at the close to midfield. That's Joe Bridges, the big tight end. And again, Coach Romberg going in that hurry up to speed things up here. 46 ticks to go. 20 to nothing. The ball on the 44. First and 10. A first down for the Wildcats. Forte barking signals in the shotgun. Again, that spread look, and Forte plenty of time. Lofts it over to Bridges. Nice juke move over midfield into GAC territory. And among those on the stop, Slayton and Abernathy. Bridges tries to get out of bounds, Gil, but he goes down inbounds. He'll get a slight stoppage of the clock while they move the chains uh -huh. and reset them. They do have two timeouts, according to the scoreboard with just 34 seconds to go, and now they have moved into GAC territory. So they're moving the ball. We may get to see Harrison Butker with his first field goal attempt at some point. It does look like Westminster's gonna right. burn at least one of those two timeouts right here. They heard what you were talking about, Trey McDaniel said it's time to burn one of those timeouts, and you get a look at the sideline for GAC. Now uh, Jerry Ronberg's coaching staff over there. Like Trey said, they just burned a timeout. But uh, you look at the time, 34 seconds, and you got the great weapon in Butker. Yeah, you want to get him a little bit closer, Gil. He's got a monstrous uh -huh. leg, so he could probably make one from this point on the football field. But you'd like to get a little bit closer to the 30. Mm -hmm. And if it's me and I'm the coach, Gil, I'd take an attempt here to try to pick up 10 or 15 yards on this play, perhaps call a timeout, and then take a shot at the end zone before you go for the field goal. Okay, and exactly, you know, we, he's, he's at a 53% clip. Uh, right now, his long has been 52 for Butker. Downstairs to John Nelson Nelly. One more region to pay attention to before we hit the break. Gill, one close to your heart. One double A. And you look at the top of the oh, ladder. Oh, yeah. Brooke and Brooks and Fitzgerald, they are squaring off tonight. Right now, good news for Gill Tyree. 17-14 Purple Hurricane second quarter. You look at Cook. Cook in Early County right there fighting for slots three and four. Thomasville's usually in that mix. But you look at those top four squads, and odds are that you're going to see three of those teams, probably the top three seeds out of this region, in the quarterfinals. Let's send it back upstairs. Thank you, John, and my granddaddy's people. I'm sure they're happy down there tonight, rolling out his forte. Under heavy pressure still, and he is bound, and he is sacked. And in on the sack was Jake Rhodes. 
outstanding play. Bill, you know, there's only one thing that you cannot have happen there if you're the Wildcats, and that's to take a loss. Uh -huh. I like how they roll Forte out. Reed Love is unable to pick up the block. He doesn't feel the pressure from his backside, but that clock in his head has to be going, saying get rid of the ball, get rid of the ball, even if you just throw it out of bounds, and they're gonna go into right. halftime having not picked up any points right there because they did not execute on that big play there with a timeout to spend and 34 seconds on the clock. A loss of 12 and the clock runs out for Jerry Romberg and the Westminster Wildcats as they take that huge loss. They trail 20 to nothing. We are here at halftime. Downstairs to John Nelson, who's standing by with GAC's Tim Hardy. Gentlemen. Thank you, GT. Let's talk to the coach. You went for the kill shot after the pick, and you got it. Yeah, uh, Darius Slayton made a great play in the end zone. We practiced that play a number of times, a throwback. Guys were in position, and uh, we saw something. We, we went after it. Guys executed a great job. And at the same time, you're using a lot of plays from the back of the playbook, a lot of different formations for success offensively. Yeah, trying to spread it out. Feel like we like our guys in space. Kyle Scales, Chris Williams, Mike Abernathy, trying to give them the ball. They're doing a good job. Got a long second half, a lot of work to go, though. Appreciate it. All right, thanks for your time. Thanks. Senator, the best seat in the house in Mark Harmon. John, thanks very much. Coming up at halftime, we'll hear from the GAC marching band. We'll also play Are You Smarter Than Your Students? And we'll have scores from around the state, including the Winnersville Classic. So stay with us for Football Friday's halftime show. It's coming up right after this timeout. We're at halftime here at Spartan Stadium. Greater Atlanta Christian leading Westminster 20 to set. It's homecoming here at GAC. We'll have coming up at the halftime, we'll talk about the toughest region in the state. 1A, 1-6A, that'll be a good one. We'll eat some very fired up parents. We'll have scores from around the state. That's all coming up. But first, we're going to check in with Grace Olson, our social media correspondent, who has been uh, playing her Wii, I think, most of the evening. But uh, we'll check in and see what she's got for us. Grace? That's right, Mark. I'm back here on the sideline practicing my sw swing, playing a little golf this time rather than some baseball. It's been so much fun. So that brings me to our poll question for tonight, which is, that brings me to our poll question for tonight, which is, should can sports-related video games improve athletic abilities? 75% of you have said yes, and 25% of you have said no. Make sure to go online and answer that question if you have not already. And also make sure to tweet with the hashtag GPB Sports, and your tweet may end up on air. I'm going to send it back over to you, Mark. Grace, thanks so much for joining us now. We welcome in the president of Greater Atlanta Christian School, Dr. David Fincher. Dr. Fincher, thanks for coming. Well, on. it's great to be with you tonight. Thanks hey. for coming to homecoming. Yeah, it's homecoming here. Now, that's very, very special. You told me there's 40 years of students coming back. 40 years. Classes 72, 82, 92, and 02 are all here tonight. I was at a big dinner with them prior to tonight, and it was scores of them around, hundreds, really, and it was great to talk with them, listen to them talk about their memories of what this place meant to them through the years. You know, it's got to be a great bond that you guys have created here at GAC that they want to come back 40 years later. Oh, it means a lot to see the integration of our families from days gone by, all still with us here from when we began. There's a little school with 150 kids long ago in rural Gwinnett County in the hinterlands, and today the campus that it is today, 80 acres developed as it is in the programs that we have today. All right, it's time to play now. Are you smarter than your students? Oh, my we word, this, this game. worries me. Reach in there. This is a question from Today in Georgia History Project, and we've got when gold was discovered in North Georgia, thousands of miners swarmed into the mountains in what the Cherokees called a Sacagaluria. <laughs> You find them, we towed them, B, C, the great intrusion, or D, a minor interruption. What do you oh, think that one tough. is? Oh, this is tough. This is tough, the great intrusion. You ah! are smarter than your students. We thank you very much for coming on Well, it's a pleasure to uh, survive this. And thank you're you going to go much. crown the queen and, and king. They tell I me I am. I'm going to. That's why the corsage. I don't normally wear that at ball games, but tonight's special. Well, thanks for coming on. Take care. We appreciate that. When we come back, we'll have a score for more information on today in Georgia history, which is a joint product project of the Georgia Historical Society and GPB. All you have to do is go to dayingeorgiahistory.org for more information. When we come back, we'll have scores from around the state. John Nelson will be by the principal of Westminster, the Westminster School, Ross Peters. Ross, thanks for coming on with us. Absolutely. It's good to be here. Tell us a little bit about what's going on at the Westminster School. A lot of things. Right now, we're, we're working on a final steps in a rollout of a one-to-one -one laptop program for students in grades 3 through 12. Uh, so they're MacBook Airs in the hands of all of our students and we're 
learning how to teach with these incredibly powerful tools in our hands. We're also going through uh, significant renovations to our libraries. Uh, and we're also in the high school uh, deep in conversations about expanding and deepening an already rich program in global programming. Uh, trying to get our students rich experiences out in the larger world. You've got the academics going out there, and there's always the a good ac athletics as well. Absolutely. It's fun. It's been a little bit rough here tonight in the first half, but we've got a great athletic program overall. All right. It's time to play that game now. Time to play Are You Smarter Than Your Students? Pick a question out from our Today in Georgia History Project. And the question is October 24th, 1962. James Brown recorded the first successful album of this kind. And October 24th, 1962, was it? One with the round with a hole in the middle. Was it B, in living color? Was it C, a live album? Or D, a rap album? Mark, I think it was a live album. The very first live album, James Brown from Georgia. You are correct. You are smarter than your students. Thanks very much for coming on with us. We Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. For more information on Today in Georgia History, which is a joint project of the Georgia Historical Society and GPB, it's very easy. Just go to todayingeorgiahistory.org. Org. And for that, we bring in John Nelson, who travels all around the great state of Georgia to bring us all kinds of great stories. And today, you have a story about the toughest region, not only just in the state of Georgia, but perhaps the toughest region in high school football in the entire country. Yeah, if you, when you listen to the piece, you're going to hear a particular division and a particular conference of folks on Saturdays talked about. And believe it or not, they're not kidding. When you talk to the coaches down in Region 16A, they know how tough it is. Region 15A with Lowndes, Camden, Coffee, Tift, and Conquit was tough. Add Brunswick and Camden due to reclassification, and you get the new Region 16A. The reaction, something this side of, you got to be kidding me. Just like I am now, a little bit speechless. I, I could not believe it. I thought you couldn't get any more competitive with Region 15A, and now with Camden and Brunswick in, it is off the chain. There will be nothing like this year in South Georgia, Region 16A. There will, there'll be nothing like it. It was tough before, you know, everybody's got great coaching staffs, everybody's got good players, good facilities. It's going to be a region, of course, that anybody could win, you know, that's, that's the way it's always been. And then Coffee and Tift bring in tested coaches to fill their vacancies with Fitzgerald's Robbie Pruitt and East Paulding's John Reed. Add that to the mix and you have to watch your back all over again. Robin Pruitt, you know, he's been a proven winner. He'll get coffee turned around and there'll be somebody they're not supposed to beat. I hope it's not us. But, uh, and in Tiff with Coach Reed, I mean, he's been a proven winner. Uh, and in Brunswick's got good athletes over there. And I, I just think that uh, week in and week out, our region will be as good as any region in high school football in the nation. So what does the new guy think about all this? It's like being in the SEC West, you know. It's probably harder to win the region than it is the state. Uh, and, you know, it's a huge challenge for us. I mean, we've played those teams in the playoffs. We have experience with them. But, you know, John, playing them every week and, and just week after week after week, it's going to take a toll. It's not going to just take a toll on us. It's going to take a toll on everybody in our region. And, you know, unfortunately, I think that's going to hurt everybody come playoff time. And Coach Heron makes the point first. Since everyone is so good and so talented, let's get this straight. To win the region, you have to play to win every week, be extra careful, extra thoughtful about your game plans, and have it all figured out ahead of time. Eh, that's easy. I think um, the teams that have the mental discipline to, to play good football, you know, each and every Friday night. I think the teams that are fortunate enough to not have significant injuries, you know, even though it may just mean that you miss a kid for a week, you can't survive that way in this region. You've got to have your kids at their mental and physical best every Friday night. And it took a lot of orchestration to get that together. I want to thank all the schools and all the coaches that helped put that piece together. Man, let's see. You talked about Asa coach, Lowndes coach, Colquitt County coach, all of them down there. Yeah, and I got, the, I got the phone numbers for the other three, so they're on the speed dial too. <laughs> Any doubt in your mind that's the toughest region in the country? None whatsoever, and I honestly think that two of the teams out of Region 1 will be in the final four in the first version of 6A, so it's going to be real interesting to see. All right, time now to take a look at our Georgia EMC high school football scoreboard, and you've got that for us, John. Right here on the app. There. By the way, there's an app for that. Yeah. So let's see what the scores look like right now as we go to half. You know, we're right here just past the midway point of the season. These games are big, big, big. And, and we talk about region play tonight, believe it or not, the way that reclassification has started are the region openers. 
in this particular region. So it's going to be interesting to see how things shake out. We're going to let you know how things are in triple, double, and single A as we go. All right, John Nelson, John Georgia brought to you by Georgia EMC. All right, let's take a look at our Georgia EMC uh, Friday night schedule that's coming up. Next week, we have a big one. Tucker, undefeated right now. Let's now check in with Grace Olson with a segment that we call Rent Check. Grace? Hey, I'm standing here with Greg and Lisa Lewis, the parents of JC senior Andrew Lewis. Let's play some Rent Check and check up on you, see how well you know Andrew, okay? First question's for you, Mom. What is his favorite teacher? Who is his favorite teacher? Miss Hughes. All right, you got that right first try. Okay, Dad, least favorite chore? Hmm, probably dishwashing. Exactly, good for you. Okay, if not football, what sport would Andrew be playing? Basketball. All right, y'all are so quick. And favorite subject in school, Dad? Uh, math. Oh my gosh, you got all four right so quickly. Okay, well here are a couple t-shirts for you to take home with you. Say Football Fridays in Georgia. There's one for you, Dad. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining Thank us on Rent Check and we'll send it back over to you, Mark. Right now it is halftime again. It is 20 to nothing, GAC over Westminster. Game we talked to the, uh, the president of GAC. He said that over 40 years of students have come back. There's the king and the queen right there. And reportedly that's Jeff Foxworthy's daughter is the queen of uh, of the uh, of, of festivities today. So we congratulate her and the Foxworthy family. We'll try to maybe talk to them a little bit later in the program right now, but we are at halftime. It's been a long halftime due to the uh, ceremonies and the crownings of the king and the queen in their courts. Lots of excitement here, lots of hugs, tears, happiness all the way around. And we're getting ready for the second half of this game between GAC and Westminster with GAC leading it 20 to nothing right now. Let's send it upstairs to Gil and Trey, who can take it away to call a second half. Guys? Uh, Mark, Hart, Mark Harmon, thank you. And, of course, you're absolutely right. right. That was Jeff Foxworthy's daughter. And also the king was Peter Whiteneck, who is a player here at GAC, an outstanding player, I may add. Pr Trey, let's take a look at the uh, first half and highlights of this football game, which right now has the Spartans written all over it by the score of 20 to nothing. Yeah, it's been all Greater Atlanta Christian so far tonight. A pair of touchdowns by Kyle Scales. Big Thank you, Dylan Trey here with Coach Romberg. Let's talk about that first half, the interception in the end zone. They got the quick seven to get the 20 point lead. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, we just we came out uncharacter uncharacteristically uh, defensively, just not making tackles uh, and uh, had some chances there and uh, offensively. You know, again, uh, we were shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties, and then we get down and uh, get the pick, and then the, the touchdown there really, you know, hurt. But hopefully we'll come back and regroup and, uh, you know, play better in the second half. I was going to say, what did you tell them at halftime just so they could get, you know, back in the game here for the third quarter? Well, I mean, all you can say is we got to continue to fight. I mean, we don't really have, a, have a, another choice right now, and, uh, you know, we've got to come out and play as hard as we can and, you know, try to get a quick score here and make it a ball game. Right, thanks for your time, Coach. You. We'll send it back upstairs. Gil and Trey, third quarter. Take it away. All right, John, thank you. And we've heard that before from Coach Romberg, haven't we? I'll tell you what, sounds like a broken record. It's pretty much Coach Romberg and company will try to get something going, but they are down in a hole to uh, the Rave Chapel and the Greater Atlanta Christian Spartans on what has been an outstanding home coming to this point. You see his numbers, uh, 6 of 9 for 150 yards. 60 of that came courtesy of the touchdown to Williams after the pick by Darius Slayton. Trey had mentioned that earlier, brought it nine yards out of the end zone, a 49-yard return. And right after that, they go for the home run and pretty much go for the juggler. And right now, they lead 20 to nothing over Westminster. Let's do a double-double do. We'll probably have to go one at a time. There's probably a weight restriction. <laughs> Oz Grief booms it and taking it. And that's Seward straight ahead. He gets close to the 30 five yard line over the 35 about to the 36 so it'll be first and 10 for them right there Trey. you know the Westminster offense has been able to move the ball but the same thing that's killed them coming into the game inability to put points on the board in the red zone has killed them tonight on their best drive of the night they throw a big time interception that was brought out to the 40 yard line in the very next play a 60 yard touchdown the backbreaker for GAC they have been able to move the ball but no points yet first and 10 at the 34 and the give and turn in a corner and that's Hayes Meyer he's been a playmaker all night gets it close to midfield and that's a first down and on the stop with Slayton Let's go. Let's go. 
Looked like Connor Bennett carrying the ball. Does a nice cutback here and takes Darius Slayton for a ride. Slew of ball carriers getting in and out of the game. We've still yet to see number six, McLean Bradley, come in and carry the ball, but he's a pretty talented guy in his own right. First and 10 at the 49. And that is the give to a Nigel Walker. That's the first time we've seen him with the football here tonight. A that, surprise. That's right, Gil. Listed as number one on the depth chart at tailback. He's a captain for this football team, but he's done most of his work tonight in the linebacker position on defense. Like you mentioned, his first carry of the night. Uh -huh. Five foot ten, 174 pounds. A senior who plans to attend a Stanford, a physics major. Like I said, designs the T-shirts that they wear at practice. A loss of one, making it at a second and 11 at the 48, 10, 58 in the third quarter. GAC out in front of Westminster, 20 to nothing. The Wildcats with the football out of the shotgun. Forte is going to keep it. Gets over midfield. And into GAC territory about at the 48. And as everybody comes from that pile and getting up, I see uh, Price Roberts among those emerging. And Ben Lorick as well. So a gain of about three, make it third and eight. So they're trying to find something that will work here. They come out in an empty backfield on that previous play. Five wide receivers and run the quarterback draw. Robert Howell, the left tackle, number 73, did a good job allowing Forte to get something out of nothing. But it's a really big play in the game right here. Third down just inside Greater Atlanta Christian Territory. Reed Love, the up back. And in the eye is Walker and throwing over on the right side. And the pass is incomplete. Was Forte, the intended receiver over there, was James Sanders. So it's a three and out. And guess who defending Gil? Parker Polehill again, having a whale of a game at cornerback. We've called his name a number a whole lot tonight. So Butker will punt at his own 37-yard line. And back to receive is a homecoming king, Peter Whiteneck here at GAC, and Kyle Scales. Uh, the punt is almost blocked, but uh, Butker was able to get it up and taking it at the 25 and moving forward and getting over the 25 up to the 27 yard line with scales a punt of 34 yards. Yeah, almost blocked by Ralph Abernathy. He's been everywhere tonight, Gill, offense, defense, special teams. He darn near blocked that kick. So Rafe Chapel will take over and lead his troops who have a 20 to nothing lead and are pitching a shutout at this point, 9.54 here in the third quarter. Like I said, next week, we will take, in fact, the next two weeks, uh, you may want to pitch a tent, Ray. That's right. We're going to be over at Holford Stadium, one of our favorite venues. And our first game will be Tucker against Southwest DeKalb. That's next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern here on GPB. Abernathy in motion. Takes the handoff and still with the football is a little scat back. He gets over the 35 up to the 37-yard line. And Bartholomew with a key block for him. Yeah, Bartholomew, space. he did a great job on that play. And Gil, you see a trend here forming for Greater Atlanta Christian on offense. And it's a variation of the speed sweep. They're sending a guy in motion. Sometimes it's Abernathy, sometimes it's Scales, sometimes it's Williams. No matter who it is, that guy is normally getting the football. And they're primarily trying to do their damage on offense on the edge against this smaller, mm -hmm. less athletic Westminster defense. And I saw out there leading the way was big number 67, Connor Cumrine. And his mom is one of our fave viewers. There you see him. Big fella. Your mom loves us. She says she loves that Trey McDaniel. <laughs> I bet she does. Every football Friday night. Second and four at the 34, 9, 23 and counting down. Gil Tyree, Trey McDaniel, the aforementioned Trey McDaniel. John Nelson and our outstanding crew here at GPB bringing you high school football here in the great state of Georgia. The spread look by GAC. The lone back and moving it through and getting straight through and emerging from that pile and coming up and Graham Powell was on the stop with Scott with scales on the handoff so that'll bring up third and two at the 34. Pole Hill the wide receiver will check out here Gill and they'll bring 
their fullback, De Decker back in. They're trying to get him some breather on the sideline, Gil, because he's played every down on defense to this point, but he is technically their starting fullback. All right. Mm -hmm. So he checks back in the game. You know, Georgia and you, Georgia and Georgia Tech are off this week, so I can't ask you a question about that. I'll ask you about who you like in the SEC, Missouri, the top ranked Alabama tomorrow. Who do you yeah. think, Gil? Well, that's <laughs> I think I'm going to take Bam. I'm not really going out on the limb with that one. And you got that big one going down at Baton Rouge, South Carolina, and LSU. That one could go either way. Uh -huh. Look at our camera crew dead on it. See just how close it was on the measurement. And a good Darryl. shot. Daryl getting off the field there. Our man Daryl and his grip getting it done. Daryl always takes one for the team. Third and one, and believe me, it's closer than that. It's inches, folks. Third and one at the 46, and they're lining up. And Chapel's going to call his own number straight ahead. And preliminary signal on the sneak would indicate he has gotten the first down. All he had to do was give that nose over the football. And move it forward. And if you if you think right now that, that there's not first quite as much energy right now, that's because GAC has no reason to have a sense of urgency about them, Gil. Right now they're trying to milk this clock, even on pass plays, outside runs, which we just talked about that they're trying to do so frequently. They're going to coach their players to stay in the field of play right now with a three touchdown lead. So really milking that play clock right. for everything mm -hmm. it's worth right now. And burning the clock as you see it tick at the top of your screen, 8:21. And counting down 20 to nothing GAC with the lead first and 10 at their own 38. Chapel will play fake puts it on his hip and looking long and has a receiver out there but he overthrows him at the 10 yard line. And the receiver he had was white neck the homecoming king and it falls incomplete defending on the play was uh, it looked like Forte was out there wasn't it? Uh, correct correct me that's Hayes Meyer. Yeah I did Hayes look Meyer. like Forte for, yeah, a second. for a second but it was Hayes Meyer defending on the play so that'll bring it up second and 10 at the 38. Boy Rafe Chapel really showcasing his arm there Gil 60 yards in the air although he overthrew his man by five six yards. Kid's got a really nice arm on him. Six foot 185 pound junior doing great things for coach Tim Hardy and company. Second and 10 the bubble screen and with space and moving and getting it close to the 45 yard line is scales. And they lined him up, and like you said, Trey, it's all about space. Yep, absolutely. And one thing that I saw on that play is the outside linebacker, number 39, the junior, Graham Powell, he got upfield in a hurry right there because that's the fourth or fifth time that they've ran that play, the third for sure, to Kyle Scales. And if Powell was getting wise to that formation and that action on the uh, Greater Atlanta Christian offensive side, if they tried that play too many times, that one might get picked off. A gain of seven, third and three at the 38. Chapel looking on the pitch. They scored that touchdown by uh, Scales earlier, and they get close to the first down, and they got first down yardage over midfield into Westminster territory about at the 49. Yeah, I love this play call going to the short side of the field with a very talented quarterback, puts the ball right where he needs to go, and Scales with the perfect pitch relationship to his quarterback mm -hmm. here. Everything working so far tonight for Greater Atlanta Christian. There you go. Hayes Meyer pushed him out of bounds. You see Kyle Scales' numbers. And, of course, uh, you know, Trey, over 100 yards over the century. Mark Trey talked about it up top. He had a whole lot of looks from big schools. But since that ACL, it kind of backed off. But a lot of the SoCon schools are looking at him. Scales turns the corner on the edge over midfield. Over the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. As they continue to just milk the clock and burn it up. Ross Johnson looked like he was over there on the stop. I saw Reed Love over there, too. Yeah, we make a big deal out of the, the weapons that Greater Atlanta Christian has, especially at the wide receiver position in Peter Whiteneck and Chris uh -huh. Williams. But those guys have been called on a lot tonight to get down the field and block as well. The play clock down to 13. First and four. First down and went four to go at the 45. Correct that. Yes. And that scales. And he's going to get first down yardage and then some. He's close to the first down and about at the 42-yard line. And that'll bring up another first down. Yeah, they had to get 41 for a first mm -hmm. down. It was a nice tackle made by Cameron Seward, but not before Scales picks up the first down. Coach talked about the yards after contact for this right. young man, the fact that he's never going backwards, always moving forward. And we've seen that tonight. It's been on display. Two touchdowns tonight, Gil. That gives him 12 so far on the season. He's been their go-to guy. 
15 carries and a buck 25 for Mr. Scales. Third, correct me, that's a first down. So was it close to a first down or it's third and one? Third and one. Okay, third and one. And Scales straight ahead. Looks like he's close to the first down yard. Yeah, straight and I'm with it. you, Gil. I thought uh -huh. that he picked up the first down Earlier. on the, on the play previous. Right. He only had to get to the 41 yard line, but they didn't give him much forward progress there. So that was third down on that play right there. And it looks like based on the spot of the official, they're going to call for measure. They're going to call for a first down. They all, they just awarded it to him. Okay. The ball just passed the hash mark on the far side of the 41 yard line. All right, first down for the Spartans. They continue to move the football and and they continue to eat up clock and chew up real estate. Jerry Romberg giving defensive signals. Hayes Meyer was one on the stop. That'll make it first and 10 at the 41. To the near side is Slayton. And Chapel out of the pocket looking long. Lost it. He has a receiver, and that is complete. And that's to the homecoming king, White Neck. And that's a first down. He's tackled inside the 20. Inside the 15, down to the Westminster 10. Gil, you know, what makes a good quarterback is that sixth sense to know when the pressure's coming. You feel it, you don't necessarily see it. And watch this pass. We talked about him showcasing his arm earlier in the drive on an incompletion. Watch him showcase it here again. Tough for a quarterback that throws right-handed to roll out to his left. And a nice play on the ball by Whitenecke. He comes back to the ball, goes up and gets it at the highest point. We've talked a lot about that tonight. Homecoming queen, King rather gets a big first down. Andrew Gorham, the cornerback on the stop, rolling right on the edge. That's Chapel. Slips, trips, and maybe under heavy pressure, and he lost possibly two. Charlie Trince on the tackle. Finally, somebody gets in the backfield. Upfield pass rush. Haven't seen that a lot tonight from the Wildcats. Shoestring tackle, but a sack nonetheless for the sophomore Charlie Trent, who normally wouldn't see the field on defense, but because Ross Johnston is out, Joe Bridges is starting, and Joe Bridges has to come off the field at some point to get a breather. Trent comes in and makes a big play as a backup. Breaking news. Nelly got a special guest. Nelly, it's all yours. Tell us who. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll return to live action. The bubble screen from Chapel to Abernathy. Over the 15, down to the 14. Nelly, can you hear me now? We just had breaking news with John Nelson with a special guest. Fill us in on who? Yeah, there's uh, a guy by the name of Jeffrey Marshall Foxworthy. And so, you know, okay, see, this is what happens when you consult the interwebs about what's going on. And I, and I think you've just revealed my middle name on television for the first time, so. That's the name I got when I had to come in uh, when I was in trouble. It was the Jeffrey Marshall Fox where they'd get in the house. When your mom got angry, yeah, right? That's exactly. They always go to full names. Okay, we're going to play a different game. We know the game that is associated with the, the one that you kind of play every once in a while when you're on stage. You might be a proud papa. <laughs> if, if your daughter's voted homecoming queen. And she said, oh, wait, I have no chance to win. So we weren't even kind of paying attention. They're like, the winner's Jules Foxworthy. So that was pretty exciting. So what's it like being a dad here and having all of this happen, you know, with the, the family that you have now growing and growing older? Hey, well, this is my youngest, and she's a senior. So it's it's strange, you know. Look at these little kids running around. It seems like it was a year or two ago. It goes by very fast. But but uh, my wife, Greg, and I are blessed. We have such good girls. And, and my niece, who lives next door, was on homecoming court landing. So uh, when you have good kids and, and you have healthy kids, you have just about everything. And a little play by play we could have had you do there. Field goal's good for Greater Atlanta Christian. And, you know, last question before you go. What's it like being a dad? How's that for an open ended question? You know what? Here's the deal being a dad of all girls, you know, I think that's God's way of getting even with you for being a guy back, you know, when, in my youth. And your perspective changes a lot when they're your daughters, you know, as opposed to the guy that is dating. But, uh, Every guy should have a daughter. I, I have loved having girls, and I've loved. You, you hear people talk about, oh, I can't wait till my kids go away. I've never felt that way about them. It's, 
I, I just loved having them at home, and I think about her being gone next year to college, and she's ready. It's time, but it's I can still get teared up thinking about that. So I'm thrilled for her tonight. This is her night. Back here in Norcross, we couldn't do it without all you fans, one of which is just Jeff Foxworthy, and please help us continue. These great games by texting GPB to 85944. Donate $10. It's simple. It's easy. And it makes you feel good to support something great going on in your state. Please help us continue these wonderful games and rep remember to reply yes to confirm your donation. Standard data and text rates apply. A one-time charge of $10 will be added to your phone bill. Support these great games and great kids, and we say thank you. And what a great night it's been for Peter Whiteneck. What a great night it's been for Jules Foxworthy and her family, and we want to thank Daddy Jeff for spending time with us or John Nelson downstairs and you never know Trey McDaniel who you're going to see at a football game huh absolutely and yeah. while he was talking to Jeff Foxworthy you saw the 36 mm -hmm. yard field goal by Brandon Holdsgrief 14 plays 58 yards six minutes and 58 seconds that's over half a quarter scoring drive brought to you by TCSG learn more earn more there you go Holdsgrief will boom it off and uh, taking it at his own 10 and advancing it and moving forward and being tripped, falling down, moving it is Connor Bennett. So down 23 nothing. Forte will try to make something happen for Coach Ron Berg, and it's been that kind of night. 242 in the third quarter. Yeah, a little less than 15 minutes of clock time to play in this one, and it's about to get to the point where you just want to have something to take away from the game. But I won't count Westminster out here. Gil, uh -huh. I believe they've got the offense that can move the ball. They've just really been their own worst enemy tonight with the penalties. First and 10 at the 29. You see Bennett in motion. A high snap. Forte will keep it. And he moves close to the over the 30 yard line up to the 30 close to the 35 and they mark it about at the 33. Yeah Carruthers in on the stop Gill, I believe he wanted to give the ball to Bennett right there but because of the high snap uh -huh. it was a broken play and he just put the ball down and carried it and did a good job making something out of nothing with a five yard gain you see his stats there for tonight 114 yards a very costly interception his seventh of the season that was Darius Slayton that brought it out from nine yards deep in the end zone to the 40 yard line a 60 yard touchdown pass in the very next play and that's why we're where we're at right now 23 nothing the spread, GSC. the spread look and in the slot and in in motion is Seward and Forte is going to roll to the edge on the right side turn in the corner tries to get it close to the 40 yard line and he gets it probably he gained maybe one if he gained that that'll bring up third and five at the 33 and you may see here Gil a strategy by coach Romberg mm -hmm. to have two plays in his hip pocket here maybe the time in the game where they go for it on fourth down if they don't make it here Johnson lined up to the near side. Seward the lone back. And the fake, but they end up giving it to Seward. And Cameron Seward, he put the football on the carpet, and there's a mad scramble for it. He may have been down, Trey. Hard to tell, Gil, because we're in an enclosed press box. I didn't hear a whistle, and I don't see a signal right now, so I believe that the officials went ahead and called a fumble but Westminster look. recovered their own fumble. I don't think we had a down by contact here at least not signaled by the officiating crew. This is a great look at it right here. He's still with it. Yeah, he's definitely down. He's, he's definitely down. down. Right. And the ball came out and I was wrong. Gil. They're going to bring the, the punting unit on here and and let Harrison Butker punt the ball. He's been a busy man in the punting game, but we've yet to see him show off his leg with a field goal attempt. But some of these punts have been a thing of beauty, Gil. White neck and scales are back. Butcher at his own 20. Almost blocked again by Abernathy. High elevator shaft punt. That's taken by the homecoming Ken White neck at his own 20. Spins, reverses his field, and then is hemmed in and tackled at about the 24. 
A punt of 45 yards downstairs to Grace Olson. Grace, it's yours. Hey, guys, if social media is your thing, we have you set right here at GPB Sports. Make sure to download the new GPB Sports app if you haven't already. With so many cool features, it's something you can't miss out on. You can even see 360-degree views of so many Georgia high school football stadiums. Also, make sure to like us on Facebook. We're uploading behind-the-scenes photos of tonight's production. So stay updated on your favorite Georgia high school football teams through Facebook. Back to you guys in the booth. And Grace, I saw you all take that picture with Jeff Foxworthy, so I'm sure it's going to be on that website <laughs> as part of that app tonight. First and 10 at their own 23, the Spartans with a 23 nothing lead. Under 10 seconds to go before we close the third quarter. And I think this play, Trey McDaniel, is going to put a wrap on the third quarter. And it is, folks, as we do every Friday night. And GAC and Westminster joining on their sidelines. And with their respective fans, they're putting up four fingers with second and five. 23 nothing. GAC out in front and taking the pitch and moving it forward and getting it over the 30 yard line up to about the 31 is Corey Stevenson. Five foot five, 160 pounder. Stevenson's first touch uh -huh. of the game. As you see that they've got a lot of up and coming talent, yes. you know, a lot of the guys that you see on both sides of the ball for Westminster and GAC tonight, a lot of sophomores getting in the mix. Loaded, loaded, loaded. Tim Hardy, of course, uh, went to Wheaton, came down here and is good friends with Jimmy Chupp and the Chupp family. And of course, Jimmy Chupp was here, coach Caleb King is back. And that's Stevenson. And he got room to run and he's in territory of Westminster galore. Over the 40, down to the 39, a gain of 39 for the outstanding senior Corey Stevenson, five foot five, 160 pounds. Take us through Trey. What did we see? It's another great play here. You see a pitch, uh -huh. and this is a guy that hasn't been on the field, and he's got a perfect pitch relationship with his quarterback. Chapel puts it right on the money again, and once again, Greater uh -huh. Atlanta Christian is able to find the corner. And at this point, it doesn't matter who's in the football game. They're able to get the edge against the Westminster defense, and it's been paying off tonight, and it paid off there again. And the Decker with the great lead block off the edge, an outstanding run, 39 yards for Stevenson, first and 10 at the 40 of Westminster. Chapel loads up, and he finds a receiver, and it's complete. That's White now. And forward progress will take him to the 29. Really impressed by Chapel's pocket presence here. They, you've seen them sprint him out to both sides tonight. One of the few times tonight he just takes a standard three-step drop and delivers the ball right on the money. We have yet to really see an Aaron pass from him except for when he threw it away to avoid an interception earlier on the uh, wide receiver screen. Very impressed with him, especially his arm strength. To the near side is White Neck. To the far side is Slate. Stevenson, the lone back behind Chapel. He gets the handoff in the scrum. He's up at the 30, running downhill down to about the 28. And he's close to first down yardage. Reed Love among those on the stop. Luke Johnson in there as well. Gil, you talked about Jimmy Chubb. Now the running back coach uh -huh. here was coach here for eight years, took this team all the way to a state championship game. Unfortunately, they lost to Buford that season back in 2002, but he really set the wheels in motion here at Greater Atlanta Christian and built quite a powerhouse program. And of course on that staff as well, Charles Edwards, who had some great years down at the Bowl School, which is very similar to Greater Atlanta Christian in terms of how it's set up and the alma mater of one Chipper, Chipper, Chipper Jones loading up and throwing long as Chapel intended receiver down there in the end zone was White Neck and defending on the play for Westminster was Hayes Meyer incomplete that'll bring up second down that was a great job by Hayes Meyer we've talked about his counterpart for GAC Parker Polehill having great position tonight from cornerback watch this positioning here inside positioning and he wasn't able to get his hands too far up in the air because Peter Whiteneck was really trying to fight him off and get some separation. A great job there by Hayes Meyer to stay with it. It was a nice play fake, uh -huh. but Hayes Meyer didn't get pulled in, get, didn't get sucked in, and made a great play there. Second and 10 at the 29. Chapel in space, loads it up and fires over there. The pass is complete to Chris Williams in the slot. And on the tackle was Jake Johnson. Johnson does a great job from his cornerback position here. He reads it all the way. Pole Hill unable to get a block on him. He just sheds that block and 
puts Greater Atlanta Christian in the third and long scenario. Gain of two. As Trey said, it'll be third and long, about third and eight. Chapel right now, his number is 11 of 16, approaching the 200-yard mark. He's right at 196. The lone setback is Stevenson. And the shotgun is Chapel. The pitch is Stevenson. He got first down yardage and then some. And he's going to try to house it. He moves inside the five, inside the five to the four. Boy, Stevenson got a heck of a block on the outside. I didn't catch the number. One of his yeah. wide receivers out there really did a good job on positioning on the corner. Mm -hmm. There it is right there. Looks like Trevor Decker with the key block and then a nice cut inside following his blocker. Fantastic vision by the senior right. running back who had not seen the field until this drive. Slayton gained some help too. 23-yard pickup, first and goal at the five. I love this Stevenson kid. He's outstanding here tonight. Stevenson lines up behind De Decker, who's in the power eye. Behind Chapel, first and goal at the five for GAC. They're trying to add some more. Chapel's going to sprint. Now reverses his field. Luke getting in the back of the end zone, has a receiver there, and it falls incomplete. The intended receiver was Slayton. And defending on the play over there looked like was uh, James Burton or Nigel. I think Nigel yeah. Walker was over there, too. It was. It was Nigel Walker. He made a nice play here. Chapel really running for his life. The Decker unable to get a block on that play as he did the play prior with Stevenson running the ball just off the outstretched arms of Slayton. Remember, this is the same side of the field, same uh -huh. end zone that Slayton picked that pass off, which has been the key play in the game so far. They were trying to get him involved on offense right there for the first time. Second and goal at the five. They lied to Decker up in the slot and the give to Chapel. He's going to keep it and he smells the end zone and he got it. Touchdown, GAC. options that they've ran to both sides really set that play up because the Westminster defense got upfield to take away the pitch man and that created a lane for Chapel and it was an easy six yard touchdown run. Holes grief in for the extra point. The PAT is good and it is now. The Spartans of Greater, Atlanta Christian, 30. Westminster, nil, 8.30 here in the fourth and final period. Let's go downstairs to John Nelson Nelly. Gil, you and Trey have talked about the relationship that Coach Hardy has with the Chups. It actually started in his college coaching days back at Division III Wheaton College up in Illinois. And you want to talk about an offensive genius? Let's show you how Tim Hardy is all over the record books when it comes to Wheaton. But go to the middle of the page. After his time was over as a player, he was an assistant coach on the offensive side of the ball and recruited two of the Chups to come up and play at Wheaton. And so, of course, wouldn't you know that you're a really good recruiter when the guy that you recruit end up getting higher on the ladder than you when it comes to all-time stats at Wheaton. So when you talk about thunder rolling through, when it comes to being a Division III powerhouse, they wanted to be the premier Christian school in the country. When it came to Division III, he wants to do the same thing here at GAC, and he's got a good running backs coach to do it with, too. No question, no doubt about that, and Jimmy Chupp is outstanding and does a great job and coaches the offensive line as well, and one of the class acts in this business and I'm gonna tell you something you see that gentleman right there on the sideline that's a star being born folks he is an up and comer the GAC scoring drive brought to you by our good friends at CCSG learn more earn more 10 plays Trey you filling in after that 67 yards three minutes and 36 seconds and the end result was a chapel touchdown and they're on their way to pitching a shutout Gil, I'd like to go back to what you're uh -huh. just talking about coach Hardy uh, and both Coach Romberg and Coach Hart, let's remember here, Coach Romberg hasn't forgotten how to coach. He might be losing this football game, but the guy's got 149 wins under his belt. He knows what he's doing, and he's got a heck of a program. But Coach Hardy's in his first year here. You're coming in taking over one of the premier high school football programs in the entire state, and he has not skipped a beat. And a lot of it's been because he's had Jimmy Chuff right by his side the entire time. Those guys have quite a relationship. And of course, of course, uh, Tim Hardy was named the head coach back in March. He replaced uh, Tim Coakley, who went down to be the head coach at Mariana down in Florida in the panhandle. 
And like John said, attended Wheaton College in Illinois, played quarterback there from 95 to 98, and led Wheaton to five NCAA Division III and playoff appearances. And he has gotten it done here tonight. Also coached at Mountain View in Lawrenceville. Yeah, Mountain and, View opened three ooh. years ago, Gil. Yeah. And at that time, Jimmy Chupp was the AD, and he brought the guy in that coached his twin sons at Wheaton, gave him the job, and then they moved back over here at Greater Atlanta Christian, very familiar territory for Chupp. We already talked about his eight years here and their appearance in the state championship back in 02. But let's not forget, Gil, this Greater Atlanta Christian School, they have four region championships under their belt, but they've yet to bring one home since 2001. They can really see that in the distance right now as we move deeper into the season, that that's really within grasp here. A lot of, a lot of it's going to come down at the end of the season for Greater Atlanta Christian because they close out their season the first two weeks in November with Wesleyan and then Love It. Love It, a team we've already seen play. They're ranked in the top 10, as a matter of fact, number 10 in the AA classification. And of course, the Spartans at this point rank number eight. Forte, Roland, and the intended receiver out there was number 22, Chris Otley. It falls incomplete. You know, you talk about star power here at GAC with Jess Foxworthy. Let's load up what it's Westminster. How about Margaret Mitchell? Huh? How about Clark Howard? How about Gordon Beckham? KB would love that one. And <laughs> Hannah Storm, dear friend of mine, CNN, ESPN, CBS, and of course married to another dear friend, Dan Hicks. He does golf and a lot of great things at NBC and uh, just a lot of people. Star power. Okay. Yeah, you want to talk about region titles and star power? GAC's got four region titles. Let's look at Westminster. Uh -huh. 17 region titles most recently in 2007. They've also won a couple state championships, 1971 and 1978. So these are two powerhouse programs here. Right now, GAC is getting the better of Westminster. You talked about the series earlier knotted up at four apiece. Looks like GAC is going to go up five games to four in that big time rivalry here in Region 6. Double one right now. As Jack McLaughlin, 6'4", 180 pound a junior. And replacing Rafe Chapel right now and running downhill. Uh, 713 to go and counting down. And the Spartans on their way to clearing the bench tray with a 30 to nothing shutout on homecoming night. Absolutely. And Rafe Chapel deserves a standing ovation. Of course, you see his backup also a junior, Jack McLaughlin, only thrown two passes this year, both of them complete. And you look at the first down discrepancy, that really tells a huge story in this game, Gil, along with that interception. Eight first downs for Greater Atlanta Christian, just one on the night for the Wildcats for Westminster. McLaughlin and the give and turning the corner right now is Micah Abernathy, but he stood up. And he may have gained one, possibly no gain. Stevenson, who has run very, very nice here tonight, comes in, Abernathy out. McLaughlin will go to the sidelines and get instructions from head coach Tim Hardy, who is also the offensive coordinator here. You see McLaughlin, and you see his frame, six foot four, 180 pound junior, will have another year remaining. And just an outstanding physical specimen by the looks of him. Love it, 608 and counting down. 30 to nothing. GAC out in front of Westminster. That's McLaughlin in the pitch, a high one to Stevenson, and he loses it. That's a loose football, folks. And it looks like the Wildcats have recovered it. Just a bad pitch. That had trouble written all over it from the get-go. And underneath it and bringing it out was Nigel Walker. Yeah, Walker the was in recovery. the right spot at the right time. We've talked a lot tonight about pitch relationship. You bring the backup quarterback in off the bench, Gill, and he might be able to stand down there on the sideline and throw some passes to get his arm warmed up. But there's no simulation you can do down on the sideline for that play right there. The ball was just a little bit high and behind Stevenson. He did a good job knocking it down and tried to get on it. But Walker got upfield in a hurry, and they get their first turnover of the game. And, of course, they want to try to put some points on the board whatsoever. Whatsoever, or excuse me, they awarded that ball to Greater Atlanta uh -huh. Christian. I thought they gave it to Nigel Walker. I thought they did too. So Greater Atlanta so Christian is going to punt here. They will punt at their own 30-yard line. And just getting it off was Russ Wood downstairs to John Nelson. Nelly, it's been a very active and busy evening for you. Hello again. 
No doubt about it. Let's talk about the way things are in 3 AAA. In the all-access pass, we caught up with Washington County head coach Joel Ingram just about how tough Region 3 Now, once again, let's talk about how we talk about champs. Let's talk about defending champs and talk about life for the new guy, the new champ, when it comes to AA in Region 7. We all know, Gil and Trey, feel free to chime in as you like, how things happened last year with Calhoun and Buford. It was one of the best. We talked about it being a must-win for Rance Gillespie. It is definitely a must-win, and he's hanging in there tonight, guys. Wow, 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 wow. Hat Lamb, one of our favorite people, one of our faves. And, of course, uh, you know, I want to say this. Rick Tomerlin is John Nelson's buddy. They love John down in Waco, down in Sandersville. Hey, everybody yeah. down there in South That's Georgia loves home. John Nelson. Uh -huh. They get a lot of FaceTime with him. And I mean nobody. Nobody knows high school football here in Georgia than our John Nelson, and we're so proud to have him with us. He's a gift, to say the least. First and 10 at the 19 for the Wildcats of Westminster trailing with 4.15 to go, Trey. Let's look ahead to next week. Looking forward to it, Gil. Back-to-back -back weeks at Halford Stadium, the old DeKalb Memorial Stadium, now renamed Halford Stadium, part of the premier DeKalb school system, and we uh -huh. get back-to-back -back doozies of football games. You talk about Tucker and Southwest mm -hmm. DeKalb in one week, and then we get the follow-up to that MLK and Stevenson. All four of those teams could make the playoffs. I love going down there to Hallford, Gil, because a lot of times they show double headers, and we can take in a game while we're waiting to call our game. A lot of talent touches that field every year over in DeKalb County. And Frankie Stevens left that program in good shape, and they're starting to just continue to get better and better and better each week and getting ready as we approach the month of November. We're clearing October right now, and this is when you find out what this is when you get separation from the men and the boys. I'll tell you what, Gil, this football season so far has gone faster than I've ever remembered a season going. We're already well in the thick of it. Every region now, beginning with this week, is now officially in region play. Now's where the rubber meets the road. Second and long at the 14. The spread look by Westminster. They're in a 30 to nothing hole and trying to climb. Let's take a look at the Wildcats resume, Trey, as we move forward. What do they have in front of them? Well, they only have three more games after this, and they have a week off there between the Wesleyan and Lovett game. Those two games, but against Wesleyan and Lovett will really decide everything. Keep in mind, four teams are gonna make the playoffs from this region and there are five, only five teams in the region. So Westminster's playoff hopes are not dashed by any means from this game, because this is the first region game of the season. But uh -huh. that game against number 10 Lovett, after the week off and having played Wesley in the week before, that's really going to make or break their season in those two weeks right there. And of course, the Spartans had next week off and then they get ready to take on Hapeville on the 26th, but they had two common opponents in Thompson. Thompson had two common opponents in them, and you saw the John show the uh, show the schedule and the standings exactly what Thompson's doing right now in their region. So yeah. it's four and out for Westminster. They'll have to punt it up. And both these teams played Thompson uh -huh. pretty close. You got to remember Thompson is a ranked school, highly ranked in the AAA classification. Right. And Greater Atlanta Christian lost by nine points, and Westminster lost to them by ten points. A lot of football left to play, uh -huh. Gil, especially here in this region. And GAC had an opportunity to beat him. Butker, who's been probably the lone bright spot for Westminster here tonight, booms one. And fielding the punt is number 21, Trey Nelson. A 35-yard punt by Butker, who, like we said earlier, is headed to Georgia Tech to play for Paul Johnson. Get a look at the homecoming crowd here, the band at GAC downstairs again to the very, very valuable John Nelson. Very, very busy John Nelson. Okay, the one the one classification we've left out is single A, and the reason is you probably need to be a math major to figure out how things are going to go when it comes to the two championships, public and private. The short version, if when you talk about public, you get points for wins, points for every opponent win, you play a higher class, you get bonus points. If teams play less than 10 games, you kind of get prorated. So you look at the public schools, and it looks like right now it's going to be five teams from Region 2 that might make it. And you talk about those five squads in the top 16. You're talking about Charlton, Irwin, Turner, who's playing at Wilcox County. And Wilcox County's beating Eric Soliday tonight. You've also got Wilcox there at 10. They'll probably move up. You go on to page two. Clinch County's playing Irwin tonight. 
And then you see Clinch right there at 13. They'll probably move up by the time things go, but you'll probably only have one representative in the public from Region 8 and Region 3. You've got 38 schools going for 16 slots. One will play 16, two will play 15, and so on. Now, on the private side of things, you're talking about 29 schools heading for 16 slots, and Aquinas at number two lost to Lincoln County last night. So you had Aquinas and Lincoln County going at it. So Lincoln County's in the public side. They're probably going to go up. Aquinas probably will go down. So once again, you're talking about points for wins, and I need slide rules and calculators, but the <laughs> bottom line is, guys, you're going to have probably 17 or 18 teams on both sides chasing after all 16 slots. It's going to mean a lot of travel, and it's going to mean a lot of teams in single A are going to put on a lot of miles, which I think is, what, 55 cents a mile these days when it comes uh -huh. to writing your mileage down. So there might be games on Saturday, which could cause a lot of problems for a lot of schools in being healthy as you go down to second, third, and fourth round games. And remember, it's a public championship and a private championship at the Georgia Dome this year, so seven title games on GPB in mid-December. You just explained it. You don't need a slide roll. Let's get Nigel Walker, the physics major at Westminster. Okay, he could figure it you all out. You took the words right out uh -huh. of my mouth, Gil, because I can't figure all that stuff out. I had to have a private conversation with Nelly earlier <laughs> just so I understood it. It looked like Stevenson in between tackles and getting over the 40 down to the 39 and running and running downfield is as uh, Tim Hardy calling the dogs off right now, just milking the clock and running it down. And uh, this is going to be a homecoming delight. Well, Gail, one of our GAC. one of our keys to success at the beginning for Greater Atlanta Christian was prove it. Uh -huh. They come in with a yes. number eight ranking, but they had yet to play a double A opponent. They had really proven their worth against several upper classification opponents. They proved it tonight, Gil. They showed that they're worthy of that ranking, maybe even a little bit higher than that, because I don't think Westminster by any means is a, is a bad team. They've got a great shot to make the postseason, but I think they came out and did that tonight. They proved it to me, and they proved it to themselves that they are worthy of a top 10 ranking. Let's take a look at the GAC and what ha what they have remaining. As I said, they'll have an off week next week and get ready for Hapeville yep. on the 26th. But after that, uh, what do they have? Well, it, it, it all comes down to the last two games, in my opinion, for them too, Wesleyan and Lovett. I'm really looking forward to seeing Greater Atlanta Christian play Lovett. We, we saw the Lovett game against St. Pius. They got blown out 24 to nothing, but St. Pius was a highly ranked team at a higher classification than Lovett. Lovett's played one of the toughest out of region schedules of any team in the entire state some teams are sleeping on them because they don't have a very good record right now but look for love it to really compete with both of these teams that we see on the field right now tonight they've got a very good team over there coach Muschamp is going to try to get that team in the playoffs and I think he's got a good shot Rosswood boots it and fair catching it at the 35 yard line and correct at the 25 yard line is Cole Haverty, it's a 35-yard punt by Woods, so Westminster will take over. First and 10 with uh, under a minute to go. 59 ticks to be exact. And Gil, before we go off the air here mm -hmm. shortly, at least sign off here yes. from the booth, love coming here to Greater Atlanta Christian. I have not seen a more hospitable group of people, and Gil, we see some of the most hospitable people in the Southeast week in and week out. Everybody that I've seen tonight has come up and said, thank you guys for what you do for the for the sport of high school football. Thanks for representing GPB here on our campus. Thanks for coming. Come back anytime. It's just been an absolute pleasure to be here on this campus tonight. And I can't say enough to Kathy Sisko, who's been an angel. She's a secretary for athletic director Tim Vick. Always a good opportunity to come back here to a place that's very special to me and see a dear friend, Glenn Yankowski, who's done... Uh, great work with the outreach and the faith-based ministries here at uh, Greater Atlanta Christian. Just a wonderful place. They get it, folks. They know what it's all about. Final ticks here, 22 seconds to go. Westminster still with the football. And that was that lead. And flags on the play. And you don't want to see chippiness here at the end because this game was played very well. And they're bringing number 59 off and really talking to him. DJ Coker, who was mixing it up with one of the Wildcats over there, and they're sitting him down and talking to him, and Tim Hardy said, we're not going to have any of this. No, he said, this is not the greater Atlanta Christian way. And, Gil, you talked about bright spots for Westminster being uh -huh. their punter place kicker, Harrison Butker. A bright spot 
guy to look for in the future is the guy that's just carried the ball a couple times. Right. And that's number six, Junior McLean Bradley. This kid's going to be back next year. He's going to be big time in the mix at tailback at this school. You uh -huh. see his size, 5'11", 205. He's only going to put weight on for next right. season. This is a kid I think that if you're a fan of the Westminster program, really look out for him next year. Number six, Junior McLean Bradley. And I also want to say thank you to that gentleman, Jerry Romberg, had an opportunity, Trey, and you and I had a chance to talk to him on a conference call. He opened practice. We were able to go out and look at what the uh, the offense and defense, and he's a class act, and uh, we wish them well as they move forward. And that's going to put a wraps on this game, and this has been all GAC. They pitch a shutout here in homecoming in Norcross final. Greater Atlanta Christian 30. Tim Hardy and company 30. And Westminster, the Wildcats coached by Jerry Romberg nil. Let's go downstairs to John Nelson, who's at midfield for very happy Tim Hardy and what's been an outstanding homecoming night here in Norcross. 30 to nothing, the final GAC. Nelly, it's all yours with Coach. Thank you, Gil. Dominating performance. That's really the first word that comes to mind. Yeah, our guys really played well tonight. We played excellent on defense. Uh, just uh, our guys just held them in check. And on offense, playmakers made plays. We got after guys did a great job. Really proud of the way they played and the way they competed. So it was a good win for the Spartans tonight, no doubt about it. And at the same time, it's also to get that good first step when it comes to region play so you can be at the top of the ladder out of the box. Absolutely. It's October 12th, and there's one game in the region. So um, region small, but it's tough. Uh, our guys played really well tonight. We got that first step, and we got got a couple more we got to get. But it was a good first start. We're proud of the way they played. Let's talk about the running game. Yeah, I know you like to have things balanced out. You got that balance tonight on both sides, passing and running. We really did. Trying to mix it up a little bit. Kyle Scales obviously is an excellent back, and uh, did a lot of things in the run game. Micah Abernathy as well. Uh, Rafe made a couple plays. Then we got the ball to some other guys in space throwing. So felt like we had some opportunities out in space with our players, and uh, they, they proved true and made plays when they got the ball in their hands. All right. Well, congratulations and thanks for being with us tonight. Appreciate it. Appreciate the. Coverage. Thanks so much. Right, let's send it over to the best seat in the house with Mark Harmon. We got players coming up, and we also might hear a very off key fight song, too. All right, John, thanks very much. Uh, the game is over, but the post game show just kicking off. Let's check out some highlights from tonight's game. Greater Atlanta Christian taking off the Westminster Wildcats, and right off the bat, the handoff goes to number 17, Kyle Scales. He breaks tackles, he moves to the outside. This was a big play, a 49 yard pickup. And this would help set up the first touchdown of the game. The game, the ball would go to who else? Kyle Scales. He takes it over from the one yard, reaching over and scoring the touchdown to make it 7 0 GAC on top. Then Kyle Scales takes the pitch. He scampers 31 yards down the sideline to put Greater Atlanta Christian up 13 0. Then late in the second, first, second quarter, it is Rafe Chapel to Chris Williams, a 60 yard touchdown play. This made it 20 0 GAC at the half. Late in the fourth quarter, Ray Chapel keeps it. He goes six yards to make it 30 to nothing. That is your final score as GAC knocks off Westminster 30 to nothing to raise their record to five and two on the season. Next week, GPB will televise the Tucker Tigers taking on the Panthers of Southwest DeKalb game. The all-access pass pregame show kicks off at 7.30 with the game kicking off just about 8 o'clock. Also on the web, another great matchup as Central Gwinnett takes on the Brookwood Broncos. Game time there. 7:30 on gpb.org/sports. So, for all of us here at gpb and gpb.org, thanks for